Kansas City Alliance Raceways Ministries, and pastor for Bethel Baptist Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, offers today's invocation. Race fans, let's pray. Father, we give thanks for this beautiful day for racing. We always pray for safety for drivers and crews, all at trackside, all in attendance. We thank you for our freedom, those who serve to keep us free. And Father, we remember the Watson family today and lift them up. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Here today to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, please welcome Angie Rosner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in there gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave We heard the mention of the Watson family Jim Wildman Watson a fabricator for the 77 team lost his life yesterday while here with the team so our thoughts and prayers go out to his family as well. Everybody ready, set, go. Rev it up and let's roll. 
There's a party in the fast lane. Got my hands on the wheel and I'm flying. Heartbeat loud as the thunder rolls. Riding in on a stampede of lightning. Sunshine, bring it back to sunshine. Baby, it's about time. Oh, oh. Bring it back. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Monster Energy Cup Series racing on NBCSN from Kansas Speedway. Today's telecast presented by Outback Steakhouse. Absolutely gorgeous day in the Midwest. Let's go to Kelly Stavis for stories on pit road. Denny Hamlin starts this race in Kansas with a pretty comfortable 21 point lead above the cut line. But he told me they've still got work to do to make this 11 a race winning car. But if they can keep that track position, collect enough stage points early, they can afford to get a little aggressive at the end of this race. Denny Hamlin starts fourth. Parker. Well, Kelly, Ryan Blaney comes to this elimination race nine points to the good, but he's going to start 40th after a penalty in qualifying. They've had one of the fastest cars all weekend, and the good news, he's fourth of cars passed on the mile and a half in the playoffs so far. Dave? Jimmy Johnson currently holds the eighth and final transfer spot in the playoffs, but to go through to the next round today, Jimmy's got to have a very Jimmy-like day. Hey, we're talking about a guy that's won at Kansas Speedway three times, Marty. Uh, Dave, there are three former champions duking it out for that final spot in the round of eight. One of those is Kyle Busch, and he knows he comes in minus seven here below the cut line. But he also knows Kansas is one of his best racetracks of late. In fact, he and Adam Stevens have never finished outside the top five here together. Adam Stevens told me this morning if he finished top three in every stage today, we'll advance to the next round. It's time for an elimination race in the heartland. So let's get the engines cranked here at Kansas. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command to start the engines, please welcome the star of A Bad Mom's Christmas and the upcoming Netflix crime fantasy bright, Jay Hernandez. Drivers, start your engines! Okay, Two drivers have already won, so they know they're in the round of eight, but that leaves 10 drivers fighting for the remaining six spots. Four will be disappointed at the end of the day. Who's going to be the four that don't make it to the round of eight?
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Outback Steakhouse, Aussie Rules, Ford, we go further so you can, and by John Deere, Gator Utility Vehicles, go Gator. These drivers come to Talladega hoping for the best, but understanding that it might be the worst. The guys are on edge. I'm a realist, you know, and I, you're only as good as your last race. There's a lot of others who do have to worry. Going to Kansas Speedway with a lot of pressure on them. Anything can happen. Obviously, you hope to not be in a must-win situation. Whenever you have an elimination, you see some extra aggression or more desperate moves if you got to have that spot to get in the next round. It's going to be intense, and it'll keep you on the edge of your seat the whole time. One bad race could end it for you. I think you have to lay it all out there and, and know that there's no second chances. There won't be any second chances today as this is an elimination race. Four will end up not having a chance at the championship at season's end. Want to take a look at today's starting grid brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Up front, two drivers that have won the last two races here. Martin Shrex Jr. on the pole and Kevin Harvick. Yeah, right, right behind them in row two is Matt Kenseth, a two-time winner here, but he's eight points behind the round of eight bubble, starting next to Denny Hamlin, 21 points ahead of the bubble. Row three, we have Daniel Suarez and Eric Jones. These two drivers are very close in the rookie of the year battle, both still looking for their first cup win. Kyle Busch and Jamie McMurray are making up row four. Kyle Busch, he's the first driver on the outside of that bubble, as you mentioned, seven points back. And Jamie McMurray really in a must-win situation. Row five, Clint Boyer. This is his home race from Emporia, 100 miles away, starting next to Brad Keselowski, who locked himself into the next round last week. Austin Dillon and Jimmy Johnson make up row six. Seven-time champ, only has a seven-point advantage over the bubble drivers, trying to see if he can rekindle some of the magic here, a three-time winner. Back in row seven, it's Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott, two playoff drivers. Neither have won on a mile-and-a-half track. Chase Elliott still looking for his first win in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Row eight, we have Kurt Busch trying to have a good day after a disappointing year, starting next to Michael McDowell. Row nine, we have Joey Logano and Ryan Newman. Rick, Joey Logano still looking for something to kind of break the slump over the summer. Really been a downturn ever since that issue back at Richmond in the spring. Back in row 10, the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. He enters Kansas after coming off his average top 10 finish over the last three races, trying to keep that momentum going. We have the opportunity to chat with Matt Kenseth before the start of the race. Let's dial him up. Hey, Matt, it's all the guys up in the booth. You with us? Got you, Joe. Well, bud, you got eight points to make up today. How are you going to make it happen? Oh, man, if you can win the race, it takes care of everything else. You don't have to worry about points. So uh, that's always the plan. Easier said than done, but that's the plan. So i got a great team down there uh, standing right there to my left, uh, ready to go to work. Um, hopefully we can have a, a stake-free day and I can get it done on the racetrack and we can go out there and win this thing. Well, this race in the spring, Matt, was caution-filled. Why is this racetrack so difficult? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it's a great racetrack, it's, uh, for, especially for a repave. You know, it's really kind of come into its own real early. It's got multiple groups, so it's a real racy racetrack. Um, I don't really know why we had so many cautions last time. Uh, all the races have been, been kind of crazy lately, so we'll just have to see what happens. Matt, we'll be riding along. Good luck today, guys. Thank you. And literally, we'll be riding along with Matt Kenseth. He will be carrying one of the onboard cameras. Well, it's hard to beat this view off the front row. The four of Kevin Harvick will have the Jimmy John's onboard camera. And we just mentioned, we just talked to him. Matt Kenseth has the Toyota onboard camera. And row two, Denny Hamlin with the Coca-Cola camera. Camera, great helmet cam. It's gonna be cool to watch this all day. Also, lucky enough to be riding along with. Dale Earnhardt Jr. with the Nationwide cam back in row 10. I'm not sure we have a camera that's going to be busier than this one to start the race. The 21 of Ryan Bellaney has the Ford Performance on board. And remember, Ray, uh, Rick, row 20, 40th position. Uh, everyone's in front of him. That's quite a view. And he is working on trying to get to the front, at least into the top 10 by the end 
of stage one. We'd love to give you a different perspective from all around the racetrack. And how about up above the aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. So this is the last race of the round of 12. Let's break down how this race will go from Kansas Speedway. Jeff mentioned how difficult this racetrack is. A one and a half mile oval, 267 laps, just over 400 miles. And so you see stages, stage one, 80 laps, stage two, another 80 laps. Race ends with another 107 laps. We're going to talk about this, Rick, all day. Big, big names when we talk about points. Jimmy Johnson just above, Bush and Kenseth below. We're also going to have a uh, competition yellow right there at lap 30. Let's go back down to Dave. And Rick, that competition caution could be a good thing for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He qualified 24th, and so as the leader makes his way back through the back of the field, if Ricky's having trouble, a caution at lap 30 may keep the leader from lapping him, Marty. Dave Kyle Larson is plus 29 at the cut line. You would think that's fairly comfortable, but he told me at points of the Talladega race last weekend, he was riding around, and the team told him right now, you would be out of the playoffs. So no slacking around today for that 42. Expect him to stay up front and up high on the racetrack as well, Parker. Well, Marty, another guy who's not safe is Chase Elliott. Only 20 points to the good over the cut line. And be looking for him to go up towards the t up towards the wall as the groove moves up, but see how aggressive he is at, with how close he gets to that wall. I'll be listening for Alan Gustin to keep him abreast of what the point situation is and how aggressive he can be getting to that wall because you don't want to get into it and cut down a tire, Kelly. The win two weeks ago at Charlotte ensured Martin Truex Jr. into the round of eight, but there is no let up from this 78 team. They told me they're here to win every practice, every stage, every race, and yes, every poll, which is exactly what they did Friday night. Martin Truex Jr. leads the field the green, going for the Kansas sweep. Rick? Thank you, Kelly. And Martin Truex Jr. went ahead and took the inside row for his start position. Anyone who wins the poll can choose either the inside row or the outside row, and Martin has chosen that inside spot on the left side of your screen you're going to see the playoff leaderboard those are ghost points and they will adjust accordingly throughout the race as the cars are running and what position they're in again every point and position go together Rick, it's a long day we talked about it it's really broken up into three races this is the start of that first stage 80 laps and some of those points will be paid. And it rained a ton here last night, so it'll be interesting to see how this racetrack changed throughout the day. First time, really, the sun's been out for these cars on the track as they come through the tri-oval. Up front, Truex Jr., Harvick, green flags in the air, racing in Kansas. A great start to the race for the 78 of Martin Shrek's Jr. out front by two car lengths. Fight for second now building between Kevin Harvick on the outside in that number four and the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Outside line is working as Harvick is able to clear Kenseth. Here comes the 18 of Kyle Busch. He starts to been a struggle for that 20 car, Matt Kenseth, but he launched really well. Was able to follow Martin Truex Jr., but two cars have gotten by him since. But still, I think a solid start for the 20. Now he's fighting back on the inside, trying to get that third spot away from Kyle Busch. Those two are teammates with Joe Gibbs Racing. Just behind them, the other two from the Joe Gibbs Racing stables, Daniel Suarez in the 19 and the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Look at Denny Hamlin all the way on the apron on the front straightaway. You'll see that a lot today. It just shortens up the front straightaway. It makes you go around the racetrack a little bit quicker just because it's shorter. Very rough down there. It can be very damaging to the front of the car. When you see on the right side of your screen, we mentioned it at the top of the show, the 21 of Ryan Blaney in that orange and white car had to start 40th on the field, came by on the last lap all the way up in the 34th position. As you see right there, passing the 34 of Landon Castle, I believe, and working on another car. Yeah, coming up on the 15, he's going to try to get by Reed Sorensen now. But Ryan Blaney has his work cut out for him as he's trying to field his way through this field or feel his way through this field. And Rick, I talked about it on Countdown to Green with Kyle and DJ that I really think the key for this 21 is understand that stage one is probably out of touch. Getting into the top 10 and scoring those points is going to be very difficult. Instead, Parker, I think he just needs to be patient. Try to keep the fender straight, not make any contact. We have seen this 21 have a few issues like that, but he has had fast race cars. 
Sure thing, Steve. As you see these cars he's passing, it's only going to get harder as he moves up through the field. But one thing that's aiding him is I spoke to his crew chief, Jeremy Bowens, and I said, all right, you know you're starting this far back. How do you make that car pass cars? And he said, you know what we've done? We've tightened it up a little bit because historically we're looser in traffic. We make those little adjustments, but then it comes down to, as you said, the driver making the right decisions, and we're seeing him do that right now. Down at the bottom of the racetrack, a very gray racetrack right now. Although the rubber is being put down onto the track, these Goodyear tires are putting rubber onto the track, which drivers like. But it's going to take a little while. As we mentioned, the rainstorms came through the area last night, washing off most of the rubber that was put down from the practices, the qualifying, and the Xfinity race, which was run yesterday. So a very light gray racetrack, which is going to get darker as the race progresses. You see Jimmy Johnson right there. Moved up into the ninth position. I've been watching him. He moved way up the racetrack and made that top groove work in turn one. First one I've seen on top of the racetrack. So went to the bottom right here. But I think it's very important. Jimmy Johnson is seven points to the good of the playoff cut. He needs to get points in this first stage. Steve, is there a, we throw out the word delta every now and then. Is there a delta at a racetrack like this, a mile and a half, where somebody has to come to pit road before they get too far behind the race leader or they're going to fall a lap behind? Well, so we talk about that delta, which is basically the advantage you have at a big track like Watkins Glen in Indianapolis with if you're within, say, eight or ten seconds of the leader, you can come to pit road, pit, come back out, and still be on the same lap. Not here at Kansas. The laps are so quick, as you see Jimmy Johnson using the top lane again, that if you come to pit road, it's an automatic loss of at least one lap, possibly two if you're at the back of the field. But, Jeff, to talk about that 48, I would be a little concerned as a crew chief to make sure my driver knows, hey, we don't want to be the guy blazing the trail up here. Rubber needs to be put on the racetrack, but you could definitely wear out a tire being the only one up there. Well, I think the advantage to him, though, is we have a competition caution coming early. So I don't think you can damage the tires because we have that comp caution. I think you can go up there and run. If it's faster up there, go run because you're going to be able to pit on lap 30 and put tires on. So I don't have a problem right now with him going there. And really that competition caution probably changed a lot of strategies for drivers because we've seen them work their way through a stage trying to figure out when to pit so that they can get an advantage and get track position but knowing that they can't add fuel until lap 30 that really probably changed a lot of strategies it did i think now the strategy is to get to that competition yellow put four tires on it and make adjustments as we ride along with this helmet cam of denny hamlin i think this is the best view to see the color of the racetracks so you see how light the straightaway is and already you're starting to see a little bit different color in the middle of the corner. It's not prominent, but it's definitely a little darker than the straightaways, Jeff. That's right, and you can, what you can really pay attention to as he on the front straightaway going to drive into turn one is where that dark groove is. So right now, you don't want to be up against the wall. See how right against the wall, it's very gray on the racetrack? There's no grip right there right now. You need it to get rubbered up, and it's just going to take time for the cars to migrate to the top. But I think eventually we'll be seeing cars running right against the wall. We really appreciate Coca-Cola helping us out and allowing us to put this helmet camera on Denny Hamlin's helmet. Marty. Kyle Busch right now in the third position, Rick. We've talked about how they came in below the cut line, and Adam Stevens telling me this morning, hey, listen, if you handed me top threes in every stage, I feel like we could advance to the next round. But the guy right behind him is his teammate Matt Kenseth in fourth position. And talking to Kyle, he said, you know what? We really are racing the 20, his teammate, the 21 of Ryan Blaney, and Jimmy Johnson in that 48. They're concentrating on those other three cars. They need to finish ahead of those cars in every stage. So being teammates, Steve, you know, you want to work together. You want to share information. You want to help each other. But when it comes to the green flag in an elimination race like this, it's every man for himself, I'm assuming. Teammates play nice until the green flag. Well, Marty, I think it's important for teammates to have that cleared up. You don't want, you talk about this all the time, Jeff. Expectations have to be the same for both teammates involved. But I really believe you're right, Marty. Six and a half days a week, your teammates, you share information. But when the green flag flies, you have to go out and attack the race for you and your car. And think about Kyle Busch in this 18 up here currently running in the third position. This used to be his worst track. He would self-admittedly say he hated coming to Kansas. But those last five races, which just remember, those are the only five he's had Adam Stevens. That group together, Adam Stevens and Kyle Busch, their numbers spectac spectacular here at Kansas. Yeah, I think what's interesting also, we. You know, we heard him talk about, Marty said that they were concerned about that 20 car and they had to keep pace with the 20 or outrun the 20. Well, Matt Kenseth and his team, they have not led a lap on a mile and a half all year long. That's an incredible stat to me. 
And, and I don't think they have to lead a lap today, but they're going to have to run well. And they're going to have to get stage points. There's no doubt about it, unless they can win the race. But, you know, without leading a lap on a mile and a half all year long, is it realistic to think you're going to win this race? It's probably unlikely. Since the drop of the green flag, it's been all Martin Trex Jr. That could be said for the 2017 season. Martin Trex Jr. has been phenomenal on mile and a half tracks. You're watching Hollywood Casino 400. NASCAR Drive is NASCAR.com's live race day companion. It's now available on your mobile device. You can never miss a lap. With NASCAR Drive, visit NASCAR.com slash drive from your PC, tablet, or mobile device. Out front of Kansas, it's Martin Truex Jr. He has a two-and-a-half-second lead over Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch running third, Kenseth is fourth, and Denny Hamlin is fifth. Steve, what about an update? on that seven or the 21 of Ryan Blaney. Well, you see him right here. We're on board with Dale Earnhardt Jr. You see the 21 working the bottom of the racetrack. Well, Jeff, you pointed out one of the first cars to the top, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and he has really found some consistency as he's moved up, and the 21 hasn't been able to get away from him. The 21 passed him a few laps ago, but the 88 has really kept up since he's moved up the racetrack. And I think a huge start for the 21. He's already moved up to 16th position, so now with a competition caution coming soon, I think now they can start thinking that they can get into point paying positions because, I mean, he's the 16th now, have a good pit stop, a good restart. You can work yourself into that top 10. I was absolutely wrong because I told him, hey, don't even worry about the first stage. But, Jeff, you are absolutely right. Only six more spots with 58 laps. This 21 car, very impressive from the start. Parker? Well, Steve, I don't think the team is surprised because all I talked to them throughout today, they were very confident they had the speed in this race car. And we've seen it all weekend. Remember, he led final practice. He was one of the fastest cars in qualifying. He's showing that right now. This 21 car has been very fast, and this racetrack seems to suit him. And I asked his crew chief, Jerry Bowens, why do you think it suits Ryan? He said, because you're in the throttle. Ryan, of all the Penske drivers, between Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano, historically shows the most time at wide open throttle on the tri driver traces. And I think that really just plays in what you're seeing here. Parker, it's an impressive run that we're seeing out of the 21. But how about an impressive season 
for the 78 of Martin Shrex Jr. The last time by that was lap 2001 as far as laps led for Martin Shrex Jr. Incredible run that he has made already and I think we've mentioned it many times but it's worth mentioning again if they don't get to the championship four at Homestead Miami it would be a huge disappointment for this team and I think it would be a huge disappointment if they don't win the championship this year because they've won the most races they've led the most laps they've been the most dominant car on whatever racetrack NASCAR goes to Kelly well, and Rick, while they've accumu accumulated a huge points lead throughout this playoffs, they haven't had to rely on that at all. They've had wins in both the first and second round to put them through to the round of eight. They hope, said they hope they don't ever have to rely on those points. And you talk about the disappointment if they weren't to win the championship. I'm not sure the team feels exactly the same way because they said, look, it comes down to just one race, and it is so hard to win these things. Everything absolutely must go right. They said Miami is not one of their best tracks, but they'll be testing there Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. That's their big focus right now. But they kind of say, hey, when everything comes down to one race, you can't hang your whole season on it. They're more concerned with accumulating as many wins as possible before Miami. Well, Rick, I just think, you know, there's no guarantees. We looked at the 18 of Kyle Busch. Everyone thought he would be a guarantee to make the round of eight. But he's in a battle today to try to advance. So even though the 78 has that points advantage heading into the round of eight, you still have to execute when you get into that round. Marty. Hey, Rick, there's Kyle Larson running the top of the racetrack. I know we're all shocked, right? He started 13th today, though. Now he's moved in to the top five. And I found it interesting, Jeff, what he told Parker in the pre-race show. Here's a guy who loves to run the top of the racetrack, but he said, I'm excited for today so I can run the top because I want to get back into the rhythm of running the top of the racetrack. He said, I haven't gotten to do it much this year, but I like doing it, and it gets me in that rhythm. And they, met, they too, are testing at Homestead Miami this week. So is there truly, Jeff, a, a rhythm to running the top of the racetrack like Kyle Larson's talking about? There's no question of rhythm, and it's also understanding what your car needs to do running the top. It's completely different than running the bottom. It's a different style. Your car needs to do different things, and he understands it. And right now, he is, without a question, the fastest car on the racetrack. We're anticipating the competition caution coming up here in a lap. Dave. Kurt Busch has already been on and off of pit road this afternoon for the first time. Unscheduled on lap 17. He had tapped the wall earlier, felt like it damaged that right rear tire, had smoke in the cockpit, so they changed two right side tires. He's laps down. Yeah, right now, the 41 team, one lap down for Kurt Busch, currently scored in the 38th position. Martin Shrex Jr. Again, out front has over a four-second lead right now over Kyle Busch, who's moved up to second. Normally, you would think running second for Kyle Busch would be a good thing, but the last mile-and-a-half track at, at uh, Charlotte, Kyle Busch was running second and on his own got up into the wall, did damage. It ended up being a bad start to the round of 12 for Kyle Busch, but right now he's holding on to that second spot as we do see the competition caution coming out now. Rex Jr., Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Kenseth Larson, McMurray, Hamlin, Johnson, Boyer, and Eric Jones, the top 10. Now all the pressure gets put on the pit crew. So the teams will have to come in. They will have service. They want to make sure to hold this track position. Can we see any gambles being taken here? Maybe a two-tire stop. I think at this point it's pretty straightforward with between the fresh racetrack, the, you know, the gray, the brand-new asphalt with the rubber being washed off it. Um, and the 30 laps. I think everyone's going to take four tires. I was actually surprised. I thought the groove would take a little longer to widen out. We've seen cars all the way at the top. So I think not only is it a good chance to get four tires, but a good chance to make adjustments, Jeff, now that you know how your car drives perhaps all over the racetrack. It's also a good chance to lose the track position that you've earned. So you've got to do everything right as a driver. You've got to come on pit road. You've got to get in your pits. No penalties. I mean, we see so many penalties in these races now. And the pit crews, you mentioned, Rick, they've got to perform. You can catch all the action of NASCAR on NBC with the NBC Sports app. You get closer with alternate camera angles, driver stats, and even track information. You can get it anytime, anywhere, like right now and right here. As we get ready for the first round of pit stops under this competition caution because of the storms that came through last night, washed the rubber off of the racetrack. So the teams will be looking very closely at the tire wear 
when they come in for these pit stops. Dave. Matt Kenseth comes in from fourth position, pitting in the very first pit stall available. He loves that type of spot because he can get the work done here and then navigate his way through everyone else leaving. Just a slight adjustment, Marty. Kyle Busch said the entry for the 18 car is good. Said it just over rotates when he goes back to the throttle. That means the car is too free. An air pressure adjustment. And our pit crew all-star, Kevin Harris, right there, slapping a piece of tape on that front grill, Parker. And Kevin Harvick pits out third place to do Ford Goodyear tires. Snoko fuel very tight in that four car. Actually said it multiple times as if they're going to do big adjustments here to loosen it up. Take a look at the race off pit road brought to you by Kroger Click List. And the top four pulling serve. Hamlin gains a couple spots. Kevin, it was so nice of you to offer to pick Outback up for us before the race. No problem. With the Outback app and curbside takeaway, it's easy. All right, I'll just run in and pick it up. Whoa, I said takeaway. Here's your order. Oh, great, thanks. Yeah. Log on to OutbackRacing.com for your chance to win a 2018 Ford Escape and a trip to Homestead, Miami for the season finale. And here I thought Bloomin' Mondays were the coolest thing ever. It just gets better. Kevin making it way too easy for Rutledge. For more with Rutledge and Kevin, head over to NBCSports.com slash Outback. And now let's go to Rutledge Wood. Rick, I'm down here on pit road with our official pace car driver today, Olympian silver medalist Brian Hansen. What did you think out there, Jeff? Fun? Yeah, that was a blast. You know, I was really nervous, and I just want to thank Toyota for giving me that experience. And, you know, it was so cool being out there with everyone behind me. And, um, you know, I'm just glad. I'm glad it all went smoothly. <laughs> Rick, really exciting for him down here. Hopefully we're going to see him at the Winter Olympics coming up in South Korea in February. Yes, a speed skater has already represented the United States and hopefully will do the same in the Winter Olympics, which are on the NBC family. Rick, while we were away, the three had to make an extra pit or extra pit stop. Austin Hillen came down. We're hearing that it was a loose right rear wheel. So that extra pit stop, he'll have to start at the rear of the field. He was up in the 11th position after the pit stop. So that was a costly mistake by the three. Have to try to work his way back through traffic. We've seen Kyle Busch be incredible on restarts. Once again, Martin Truex Jr. has chosen the inside line. That puts Kyle Busch on the outside line. We've seen the groove work its way up. Could be an advantage for Kyle Busch on this restart. 
field approaching the Geico restart zone. Another great launch for the 78, but here comes the 18. Trex Jr. out front, Kyle Busch with a great run off of two. Fighting back on the inside, the four of Kevin Harvick. Kyle Larson on the very top lane, trying to make it three wide. That's for a restart violation, Cole. We're hearing the 78 getting posted for a restart violation, and when he dove below the white line, I know that in the driver's meeting, Richard Buck mentioned that that inside line was not supposed to go below the white line until after the start finish line. We got to look at it again. Yeah, they specifically said in the driver's meeting that the, you have to stay in your lane. You cannot change lanes before the start finish line. And that's for everybody. And that's we everybody. And, and clearly Martin Truex Jr. turned left and was below the white line. Now there is no white line rule, but that's a clear indication that he changed lanes before the start finish line. Let's take another look at that start of the restart. Again, the 78 will be on the inside line, and they can't, he can't go below the white line until he gets to the start finish line. Obviously, he does. Well, so the question is, what about Kevin Harvick in the four car? You know, also so followed him. Yeah. Right is it their start finish line now? Yeah, we got a pit this time, new pass-through. You hear it. The crew letting him know you've got to pit this time and do a pass-through. So from race leader to having to serve a penalty to come to pit road. We're going to ask the question about the four of Kevin Harvick and find out if he will also have to serve the same penalty. Yeah, because it was very clear on the replay that he followed the 78 below the white line. So we've asked NASCAR to get some clarification on the four. We'll wait to hear what they have to tell us. There's the 78 serving their penalty. Kelly. Mark Truex Jr. said he did not think that that was a rules violation. And then Cole Pern asking the same question you guys are asking in the booth. Why wasn't the four penalized as well? They've told Martin Truex Jr. be careful. Do not speed on pit road as they do their pass through penalty. And that's my question, Kelly. I feel after the notes I saw from the driver's meeting that that white line was going to be considered the bottom of the lower lane. So you can't change lanes. That was clear to me. But the four in my mind clearly went down there and followed the 78. I'm going to have to have some description or an explanation from NASCAR because it seems like the same infraction to me. Parker. And guys, nothing has been said on the four's radio. It's been absolutely silent since the restart there. So I don't even think they know that is a possibility. And again, the four was following the 78, which normally happens on a restart. The guy behind the leader will follow him, either push him or draft off of him, just try to stay with him. And that's what Kevin Harvick did in that situation. But he could have ended up following down there to where he might be penalized. Yeah, and I, you know, they made it clear in the driver's meeting. We, I read the notes from the driver's meeting. They made it very clear that even the leader had to, could not change lanes. And that if you went below that white line is a clear indication that you would be changing lanes. So they called it the way NASCAR said they were going to call it. And again, we watch. It's only up until the finish, or the start finish line. So they were before the start finish line, below the white line. So keep in mind now, Martin Truex Jr. His penalty was to pit. He had to come in and do a drive-through penalty on pit road. But because he didn't have to stop, he is still on the lead lap. He's three seconds ahead of Kyle Busch. So still on the lead lap for Martin Truex Jr. Marty. And Jeff, I don't know that the drivers really got that message from the drivers meeting. In fact, Kyle Busch just asked Adam Seaman said, why was the 78 penalized for a restart violation? He said, I want to make sure I understand it because I don't want it to happen to us. A very smart move by Kyle Busch to make sure he completely understands why the 78 was penalized. Well, one reason it's a problem here is because of the shape of the front straightaway. It is a D-shaped oval, which is not unusual. We see other D-shaped ovals, but this racetrack we see a lot of drivers use the apron. We saw it early in the race. It changes the distance to turn one so much at this racetrack, and I think that's why we see that problem here. Maybe not even, even a problem, but that's why we see drivers using that apron so much at this racetrack. And I will, I will say exactly what was said in the driver's meeting. The Richard Buck said restarts. 
just want to remind everybody to get lined up in the order of race control, bumper to bumper, door handle to door handle. A reminder to stay in your lane until you cross the start finish line. The front row establishes the lanes and the inside lane must be established above the inside painted line. That was what was told to the drivers and crew chief at the driver's meeting just about two and a half hours ago. So Rick, I just got off the phone with Scott Miller in the NASCAR tower and he said that that communication that you just read that the front row, it was their job to require and establish the lane above the white line. That's the violation that the 78 had. He went below the white lane below the white line that's changing lanes not establishing the lane they don't feel that the four was a penalty because he followed the leader to that position running in the same lane as the car in front of him so that's their explanation that the front row was supposed to be the one to establish that lane and the caution comes out the 83 up into the wall in turn two that's brett moffitt and it's right side damage to that toyota you just heard him ask how bad is it Flat side of the right side of that car. So the caution comes out now with 34 laps to go in stage one. I think this sets up a, some interesting strategy opportunities, Steve. 30, right now 34 to go at the end of this stage. They only ran 11 laps on that run. Could, so we, could we see some people stay out? Could we see some people only do two tires? Some interesting strategy calls right here. Yeah, big strategy opportunity for sure as we see what happened to the 83. He's already into the wall right here on corner entry. Another car that's really going to benefit from this is that 78. We saw him have to serve that penalty. Well, he was still on the lead lap, yeah, he so now he, can, lap. now he can get caught up, probably come down, take four tires, and advance up through. So just to reiterate, I spoke, spoke to Scott Miller, who's the basically the senior vice president of competition. He was the one that gave me that explanation, the difference between the 78 and the 4, both being below the white line. Marty? Hey, Steve, this sets up an interesting dilemma for these crew chiefs. They have eight sets of tires to use today. And in the spring race here in May, a lot of teams ran out of sets of tires. So you get these early cautions like this, it can make for an interesting decision on top of the box, can it, Steve? Well, yeah, absolutely, because when we talk about tire limits on the Xfinity side, everyone has four sets. It's a shorter race, a little more straightforward when to put them on. But with eight sets and such a long race, how many more 11 lap runs are you going to have? Do you have to save tires? Tires are definitely an advantage. So the question now is, can you afford to use a set? And as we see, all the leaders now are taking the hard left hand turn coming to pit road, or at least the front 10 do. The field's pretty split, Rick. It'll be interesting to see how this rolls out as they get back on the race. Ryan Blaney stayed out. So did Brad Keselowski. Marty. Uh, you guys talked about it. It's kind of some strategy all over the place. Leader Kyle Busch does come down pit road. He said the car just still over rotating too much for his liking. Going to be another air pressure adjustment trying to tighten up this 18 car, Parker. Kevin Harvick at the bottom of your screen there was hounding Kyle Busch for the lead. He said the car was better. It's just still too tight on the entry. It's going to be four Goodyear tires, snow go fuel, and a small air pressure adjustment for Kevin Harvick. So again, cars staying on the racetrack. We'll get track position as we watch the race off of pit road. Kyle Busch held his position. So did Kevin Harvick. Casey Kane, two tire stop for them. 14 spots gained on pit road.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast, Marshalltown, construction tools for the professional since 1980, and by Toyota. Let's go places. I want to listen in to some spotter communication from the two car. There's three cars behind you are on the white line, and the fourth car is against the wall. It's 88. Chase is a minority up there, but he gets the good run off the corner. Later, 40% through one and two, as well as three and four. Just above the bottom hash. That was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. Just really good information from the spotter to the driver, just letting him know what other people are doing, especially right now while you've got the lead. It's really important to know what the guys behind you, where their strength was, because you've got to hold them off. We've got some different strategies right now for sure. Keselowski, Blaney, all the way down to Martin Truex Jr., the top six. They all stayed out, did not pit. They're a little bit older tired. And, Jeff, after that restart, we just saw the violation of the 70, and I'm going to be watching the restarts. I got the explanation from NASCAR about the four not being penalized. I don't love that explanation. They have the right to enforce it as they see fit. That's how they think the rules should be enforced. I think it would be much cleaner if it was black and white. If you're below the white line, you should be penalized. But now that everybody knows, we're going to have to see how it's interpreted, interpreted through the rest of the field on this restart. So Brad Keselowski has chosen the outside line. We have seen race leader take the inside line up to this point as they go through the Geico restart zone. Two spins his tires. Saw a couple cars dive below that white line, but that was after the start line. So they are allowed to do that. They can change lanes once they go past the start line. Four wide as they come out of two. Ryan Blaney needing to have a good start to get points in stage one. And already up front leading laps at Kansas. So the guys who didn't come to pit road, Ryan Blaney, Brad Kozlowski, they're still taking advantage of that track position, although we see Kyle Busch now breaking up there into the top three and now top two. Ryan Blaney and his team, the strategy here was to obviously just get stage points. They might not win this stage, but finding a way to get themselves some stage points, gamble a little bit. Remember, 27 to go before this stage ends. They might lose some spots because of these tires, but as long as they stay in a top five, top six, top seven, they've netted out, they've gained spots. That's Here comes the 18. This is for the race lead. Kyle Busch looking to the inside of Ryan Blaney. Those fresher tires are working out for Kyle Busch. Yeah, and then like Jeff said, now the 21 needs to just kind of settle back in line. But a very nice job from a very, I won't say inexperienced, but definitely short on experience when you look at the playoff field. Ryan Blaney only has 85 starts. His crew chief only 85 races on top of the pit box at the cup level. He lost a huge amount of momentum right there when he got behind the 18 car. The 18 car moved up, moved up in front of him. He lost all the downforce on his car. Harvick went blowing by him. Now Keselowski looking for the spot as well. Parker. Well, guys, the reason they did this strategy was exactly what you said, to get some track position, but also figure out how that car does in clean air. They had made adjustments that they would taken out for being in traffic and wanted to see how those would work when he finally got the clean air and maybe get some of those stage points. As you said, this has been an incredible drive in this first stage by the 21 cars we go through here. And just to let you know, as they came to that restart, he was instructed exactly what not to do. They told him what the 78 did and said, do not go below that white line. Marty. Parker, you know every crew chief up and down pit road has now noted what the 18 just did. He restarted seventh in two laps. He got to the lead, so pretty impressive. That's what new tires are going to mean today, Steve. So when you're a crew chief sitting on top of the box, what are you now thinking when you saw the 18 do that going from seventh to first in just a handful of laps for those fresher tires? Well, now I'm thinking I better have tires when this race ends. So, Marty, you talked about the tire limit. While the tires are helping Kyle Busch at this moment in the race, he has used a set more than, say, Brad Keselowski, who you see on the screen. He chose not to pin. And remember, we talk about the numbers of, and the laps and tires as far as the wear. 15 laps. That was the difference between the Brad Keselowski, the Ryan Blaney tires, to the drivers that now are running up front, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Parker. Well, guys, and, and Steve in particular, I want to let you know that Rodney Childers came across the radio just before this restart to tell Kevin Harvick that 
with the tire situation, he felt like you had to do 34 laps per each set now as they go forward in this race. So now numbers are being put on these drivers. We ride along with Denny Hamlin, that Coca-Cola camera, right on the visor of Denny Hamlin's helmet. Hamlin running in the fifth position. As they look back at Martin Truex Jr., remember he did not pit as well. He restarted sixth, and he's falling back to 11th, and Jamie McMurray trying to take that spot from him. So tires are huge. There's no doubt. And remember, Kyle Busch is leading this stage right now. That takes stage points away from Martin Truex Jr. If he can finish it off, Kyle Busch adds playoff points for the next round. And if he's able to make it into the round of eight, Kyle Busch would be second seeded in that round as they're all fighting to get to the championship four. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Kansas. This telecast presented by Outback Steakhouse. 65 laps into this one. I want to take a look at some Outback curbside takeaways. All right here, guys, you see a Ryan Blaney. We talked about it. He had to start last. Now he's all the way up in the fifth position in these stage points. They're going to be key. Kyle Busch leading this race needs these points and restarts. We've already seen how chaotic they can be. But listen, this is changing very quickly. Marty, the 42 on pit road in front of you. Could be a huge development. You see the hood going up. Kyle Larson said he thinks the engine is going bad on the 42 car. He said it was flashing like there might be low oil or something like that. He asked Chad Johnson, what do you want me to read on the screen? And he couldn't get a firm answer on what he needed to read on his dashboard. They told him to bring it down pit road. He said the problem was getting worse. He came in plus 29 above the cut line. He's trying to keep the engine idling, he's saying. Someone from Hendrick Motorsports is looking inside, and they are now shutting off the engine. Huge possible implications here in the playoffs, guys. Right now, Kyle Larson's being scored below the cut line. So Kyle Larson, one of the early favorites in these playoffs, potentially out and won't make it to the round of eight. And Rick, when he fires the engine back up, you can hear it just is running very sour. It does not sound correct. 
at all. Scotty Maxim is one of the head guys in the Hendrick engine department has come down to the 42 camp to see if he can diagnose anything. And Chad Johnson just told him, just run it as long as you can. Basically all he's can hope for right now is that a lot of other people have problems. That's, that's really what his hope is, that the people he's racing with trying to move into the next round, that they get in wrecks, they have mechanical issues. If not, he stands a very good chance of not advancing. A week ago, we talked about make sure you don't get caught up in the big one, in the accidents, because Talladega is so difficult, especially if you're a part of the playoffs. Well, he was running up front, almost taking the lead at Talladega and got collected. He could have won that race, guaranteed him a spot in the round of eight. And now, as he comes to Kansas, he's currently below the cut line. Well, once again, everybody kept telling everyone that there were three cars definitely going to Miami Homestead. The 78, the 42, and the 18. And we've seen two of those three have major issues in this round. Marty. And Jeff, I just checked in with Scotty Max, and they thought the, the, the engine, Steve, and you can decipher this a little bit more, was in low oil protection mode, but it's in some sort of limp mode. So they're currently trying to figure out a plan as to what they can do to maybe fix the problem. Jeff Andrews, the head engine builder at Hendrick Motorsports, is now down here, but it's in sort of some limp mode, if you will, for the 42 kind of protecting itself. So basically what happens in the electronics of the ECU, these engine builders have put systems in place where if, say, an oil line blew off and the engine said, hey, I'm, I'm low on oil pressure, it'll only run a certain RPM to prevent a catastrophic failure. Well, it seems like perhaps they aren't having the mechanical issue, maybe it's an electrical issue. So the engine is responding, maybe a sensor's gone bad, saying it has a mechanical issue, that could be why the 42's not running up to full power. We saw that very thing out of the four of Kevin Harvick at Talladega. It would not continue to run because, as you mentioned, the EC unit was telling it it had a problem. Dave. With all the cars that stayed out, Rick, the 48 restarted in 16th position out of stage points. Jimmy's car has worked very well and is all the way up to fifth in position to earn some. By the way, Matt Kenseth went the other way. Parker on the 24. And the guy chasing that 48 car would be his teammate, Chase Elliott in the 24. Coming into this race, he'd scored the most stage points of any playoff drivers in this round. And they started this race 15th, but he's worked his way up to 7th, as you see, using that high lane. It was a little tight to start the race, but the car has come to him, and he's very very happy with it right now, Marty. And Parker, they've just asked Kyle Larson to go to the diagnostics page on the ECU on that on his screen right in front of him. He's saying it's showing low oil protection mode and stuck throttle protection mode. So they're right now asking him, are those letters white or those letters red? He's saying nothing is red on the screen right now. So see they're again trying to formulate a plan down here as to how they can fix this for Kyle Larson with maybe his playoffs on the line. So you're you can't be guaranteed about the oil because perhaps you have an oil pump going bad but Kyle Larson can guarantee that it's not stuck at wide open he can move the throttle so it definitely sounds like an electrical issue right, perhaps some sort of sensor issue number, and then I need the lambda left and right there shouldn't be two lambda numbers I need both of those ECU off status one is zero the lamb down well here let me see what I'm wide open it's uh, about 983 and then the lambda is 932 yeah, like 900. Rick, we all know how dangerous it is to text and drive. Well, he's reading text messages basically on the dash, trying to make laps around this one-and-a-half-mile racetrack. Yeah, at nearly 180 miles an hour. I know he's going a little bit slower than the rest of the guys, but still uh, carrying some impressive speed around here. As we continue to listen to that communication, take a look at this situation. Entering Kansas third in the points, 29 points above the cutoff line. Now he's 10th, and he's 21 points behind that cutoff line. Well, I think the main thing right now, if you look at where everybody's running, the entire top, where well, Eric Jones is running 10th, but everybody in the top nine are guys that are in the playoffs. So on a day where Kyle Larson could have a catastrophic day, everyone else is having a good one. But Jeff, the big winner of this first stage has got to be Kyle Busch, currently leading. He, if he can stay in this position as we have the 42, finally letting go on the front stretch, smoking down the apron here, Rick. And there it went. So the ECU couldn't even protect the engine for Kyle Larson. And now Kyle Larson's hopes of making it into the round of eight 
go up in smoke. Well, this tells me it wasn't just an electronic issue uh, unless that caused some sort of mechanical failure. You see the smoke out the pipes. Um, you know, listen, you, there's a hundred things that could be inside the engine, but definitely a, a failure that is he's not going to be able to recover from. And this, this is one of the teams and drivers that everyone feared going to Homestead. Everybody talks about how good Kyle Larson is running the top of the racetrack. We just spoke about it. This race team, if they could go to Miami Homestead, everyone believed could be a favorite. You could see right now a championship ended because the, the last four races laid out so well for this race team. So now, Jeff, the only thing this 42 can do is sit back and hope someone else has trouble. It's going to be very difficult. We're going to have to see where everybody officially finishes at the end of this stage because they will automatically earn points. But remember, he was plus 29. So even stage points aren't going to be enough to eliminate him. What if two or three cars have an accident? I think if you're one of those middle cars, maybe Hamlin, Elliott, you have to think that if we just run OK here, we're going to eliminate the 42. That has to be kind of a changing strategy as we go, Rick. You have to understand where everybody is within the points rundown. And you think about how things happen at certain times. This is the first DNF for an engine for Kyle Larson since he's been a full-time cup driver. And it happens at such a pivotal time in his career. As we've all mentioned, definitely one of the favorites for the championship this season and now could be eliminated right here at Kansas. And it shows you how hard it is to actually win a championship. You In these three race segments within these playoffs, if you have two bad races, I don't care how many playoff points you got, you could find yourself out. Great chance that this one will end under caution as far as stage one. Back at the Kansas Speedway, about to wrap up stage one. It will finish without Kyle Larson, who came in plus 29 to the cut line. Kyle, what was the first indication something was wrong with the engine? Uh, I felt it drop a cylinder or something. Um, so disappointing uh, way to finish our race and probably our, our season. Um, but we'll uh, be all right. I know in the possible scenarios of things that happen today or that were going to happen, this is probably nowhere on the list for you. Will you sit and watch the points and see how it plays out or what? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm going to watch. Uh, cross my fingers and um, pray to anything I can pray to, but um, I don't think 29 points is enough. So uh, 
disappointing, but uh, we've had a had a good year. Got to thank Credit One Bank, Target, everybody that's been involved. Uh, Chip, Felix, Rob. Um, sucks to uh, to to have the engine failure, but um, it's just it is what it is. If a season of work like this to to end so suddenly, what's what's the emotion like right now? Um. I don't know. I guess it, 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 it's sinking in as the second passes by, but uh, I don't know. It, um, it, 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 it things happen. You know, I think you look at the past playoffs. Um, you know, the '78 had an engine issue last year, best car all year, um, and then us this year. So disappointing, but uh, there's still a long race left to go. So you know, maybe maybe we can get lucky. And if you think about the tough day, it could be for Ganassi Racing, Rick. Now the 42 possibly out. Jamie McMurray with a win-only scenario to make it into the next round might be a tough day for Chip Ganassi Racing. A crushing blow to the entire team. But Kyle Busch wins stage one. And not only does he gain a valuable playoff point, but the 10 points for winning that stage is definitely helping him as he started the day below the cut line. Those 10 points are going to make it a little bit easier to try to advance. And now, with the problems with the 42, another step forward for Kyle Busch. Take a look at the stage one results. And look at these, look at these stage results. And Kevin Harvick gained points in the Hamlin. How about Ryan Blaney? Very calm drive to the front. Great call on the pit box to get his track position. Got seven points. Jimmy Johnson with five. Matt Kenseth, though, remember he started third in this race, but only got two stage points. I think that's a loss for Matt Kenseth. Dave. Jimmy Johnson was able to gain those five points. That was big. They also told him, Jimmy, with the 42 dropping out, that makes our world a little bit better. And when the 42 did drop out, he pulled into the garage area right between pit stalls 37 and 38. There he is, and to the left is Jimmy Johnson, where he would want to come in. So the trail of oil that was left behind was quickly cleaned up by the 48 crew to make sure that when Jimmy comes in and applies the brakes, he actually stops. So the 48s of Jimmy Johnson was right above the cut line when he entered this race, and now, as they mentioned, maybe capitalizing on the misfortune of the 42 team. Ryan Blaney taking advantage of not only the competition caution, but the caution that came after that, being able to work his way up into the top 10 and earn valuable points in stage one. That's been the goal of these playoff drivers, get as many points as they possibly can. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. showed us how to do it earlier at Charlotte's, and now they come to Pitt Road. Marty? Rick, as you mentioned, a huge playoff points for Kyle Busch and his team by winning that stage. He comes to pit road, obviously, with the lead here. He said the car was just, again, too free, over-rotating in the center of the corner, so they're going to make another air pressure adjustment, trying to tighten up that 18 car, Parker. Marty, the four car, Kevin Harvick, pits out a second place, finishing second that stage, and asking his team, what does that mean that the 42 is out? They told him most likely the 42 is out of the playoffs. Just a little note for their point situation. And that 11 car of Denny Hamlin has just been loose, loose, loose. They put two rounds of wedge in it. Last time down pit road, it's 50% better. Still a little free on the 11. Race off pit road brought to you by NASCAR Heat 2 video game. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, they hold on to their top two spots. Blaney and Kenza moving up on pit road. So gaining spots on pit road, definitely helping a few of the teams out. And let's see if we can chat with the winner of stage one, Kyle Busch. Hey, Kyle, it's Burton. You got us? Yes, sir. Well, one of your competition fell out of the race, and you won a stage. I'd say things are going well for you so far. Uh, easy now. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. We uh, got a long way to go here. and a really good race car, so we just got to keep our mind on the prize and uh, best to try to go win this thing if we can. So. M&M's Halloween Camry's been fast. We just uh, keep doing the right things here. Kyle, we saw a, a call early in the race as far as the car going below the white line. Are you clear on the rule on this restart? Yeah, it's a brand new rule for the day. And uh, Adam and I made sure to listen to that in the driver's meeting. And uh, pretty interesting how that just kind of popped up. And I uh, feel like we got a good understanding of it. All right, we'll be watching. Have a good day. Thank you.
So there you have it. He knows the rule. They were paying close attention. And again, a few people gaining some spots on pit road. The restart when we come back. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Kansas Speedway continues. Stage one is complete. And at the end of stage one, the drivers in the top 10 earn points. So what we want to do is show you where the points are right now. This is the points with the 10, the 10 points that were awarded or the top 10 that were awarded in stage one. That's how they look right now. Yeah, quite simply, this is the real points. So they just ended stage one. Here's what everybody got and then added to their point total coming to the race. So you can see Kyle Busch, you know, if he doesn't earn any more points in the second stage, he isn't guaranteed to move in. Right. And also, if you look at Kyle Larson, currently he's in. So what this demonstrates is that his day is not completely over. It's against the odds, but other people have to execute. Yeah, because Kyle Larson in the garage, he's going to get probably one point for the finish of this race. He's currently 19. But as you mentioned, Jeff, there's still the second stage points to be awarded and the end of the race points to be awarded. So I think the best way to show that is our points as they run, our ghost points on the left side of the screen. We're going to put those in right now. What these are, this is us assuming these guys finish in this position for the rest of the day. It's kind of like a, your projection. Hey, this guy's going to run here in stage two and here at the finish because that's what you have to do. Well, look how they flip right away. The 42 is minus 18. So if all of these playoff drivers continue to have this type of success, then the 42 is definitely out. So when you hear Kyle Larson say, hey, I'm going to sit back and hope, have my fingers crossed, Jeff, at this point, he's hoping for one of these cars or a couple of these cars to have problems and not gain any more points throughout the rest of the day. That's exactly right, but it's not a slam dunk for these teams that are still on the racetrack. They're still going to have to have finishes to move into the round of eight. And there you see the spotters. Coverage provided by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less on the track and on the road. So important on these restarts, which we're getting ready for now as they Come up to the start finish line. Green flag back in the air and on the inside Kyle Busch outside is Kevin Harvick. And Chase Elliott on the inside. Remember he made that move after the start finish line so that's legal.
top two hold their positions through one and two. Forty eight running that second line that second groove twenty four down on the bottom of the racetrack. And Jeff you talked to Kyle Busch and he mentioned he wasn't ready to award himself a position in the next round yet he knows what's ahead. But how about the rest of these playoff drivers. Do you think their strategies have to change knowing the 42 is out of the race. We just showed that they could still not advance right they have to still go out and earn points. I think it depends on who you are I think for the four because of where he is in points I think the 11 for where he is in points but for Matt Kenseth the 48 for 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 Blaney I don't think those guys can I don't think it matters to them because they're in such a tight race back there for that cutoff spot because yeah, as we drop that playoff leaderboard back in this just shows how they're running is good enough if they can maintain this through the whole day Rick but let me tell you I've led a lot of races nowhere near have I won that many races right it's easy to run here during the race, very hard to complete the race in that same position. Jamie McMurray, the driver we've talked about, needs to move up to the front and win this race if he wants to advance. You see him 32 below, 32 below the cut line. Parker. Well, Jeff, I just want to go back to something you just said a little bit ago where you said Ryan Blaney was with a group that couldn't lay down. You know, this doesn't automatically get them in, and that's exactly what he was instructed by his crew chief, Jerry Mullins. He said, look, the 42's out, but we are in a tight race with the 24, the 48, and the 20. We need to stay focused and go and race your butt off. Park, you said it earlier. They talked about the confidence they had coming into this race. They were fast in practice. They qualified well. They just had that problem with post qualifying tech that moved them in the back but it's not surprising me that they're running this well now they just have to finish it off it's a lot of racing left and we saw the spring race here 14 caution so this race can get problematic quickly this race is turning good for Jimmy Johnson so far working on the race car the last run even though it got him two stage points the car was loose and on top of the track according to the drivers so this time as it gets pressure from Jamie McMurray and trouble for the 78 right Martin right Truex Jr. now, guys. Yeah, problems for the 78 as he makes the hard left turn and comes towards you, Kelly. Yeah, Martin Truex Jr. reporting a vibration. He said it was shaking really badly, so Cole Pern, the crew chief, immediately told him to come down pit road. Of course, they've got four Goodyear tires ready to go to change it out. Potentially had a loose wheel on this 78. And mistakes continue to be made. Now, the thing that the 78 team has to fall back on is that they've won. They have the win. They know that they are advancing to the round of eight. So not as big of a of an issue for the 78 team as definitely it is for the 42. Well, let me play devil's advocate with you just a little bit, though. They just, you just saw Kyle Busch win a stage. That's playoff points. The team that could keep them from doing that is the 78 team. So the more trouble they have, the more points that the competition gets awarded for that round of eight. And that was where we saw the 78 have to get slow and on to pit road and we'll see if that vibration continues for the 78. But again the first race of the round of 12 it was the 78 who ended up getting the win and that guaranteed the spot into the round of eight. I, I know it should be so clear how valuable the wins are but we just get proved every year that how much they really matter the 78 this mistake you know they don't like it but they can recover imagine if the 42 we saw the replay from Talladega if he could have won that race this engine failure would not have affected his championship hopes that was the 78 last year remember that engine failure at Talladega eliminated the 78 a year ago and again the win at Charlotte gives him that little yellow box to the right of the 78 number on the playoff leaderboard and that means that he advances into the round of eight. Right now it's Kyle Busch who's out front by a half a second over Kevin Harvick. Ryan Blaney running in the third spot. Kenseth, Johnson, McMurray, Elliott, Hamlin, and Keselowski all in the top ten as well as Clint Boyer. For an update on the five of Casey Kane, let's go to Parker. 
Well, Rick, all the time we talk about these multi-car teams that maybe have a team that's fallen out of the playoffs, like the five at Casey Kane. Can they help their teammates in the playoffs? Well, in his case, the 24 and the 48, and a lot of times we're told, yeah, they can, they can work on some things, or they can search around and help them with some setup ideas. But the five this week is running an experimental setup for Hendrick Motorsports and has gone from outside the top 20 to now knocking on the door of the top 10 and chasing down his playoff contending teammates of the 48 and 24. So I ask you, Steve, that looks like it's working me, and this is the best example of a teammate outside the playoffs maybe finding something that's going to help that Hendrick Motorsports team as we get into the round of eight. Well, I agree, Parker. The goal needs to be to help this 48 and 24 to try to keep up with the likes of the 18 and the 78. When we go into the round eight, remember Texas is in there that mile and a half. But even if it doesn't help them and they're not fortunate enough to advance, you also can't stay so focused on 2017 that you forget about 2018. And sometimes these experiments, Marty, can help for the year upcoming. And Steve, it's been a decent day for Jamie McMurray, another one who we know is in a must-win situation. He came in minus 29. Right now, he's actually lost the spot in terms of the playoffs. But running in six, and the car hasn't been that bad. And Jamie told me earlier today, if I could pick a style of racetrack where we could go and we needed to win, I'd pick a mile-and-a-half racetrack. They've been very strong at those tracks. But, Jeff, what a frustrating situation to driver. You know you've got to have that win, but you've got about a fifth-place car. Not much Jamie can do behind the wheel. Well, the thing Jamie can do behind the wheel, though, is keep himself in that position and keep trying to make the car better, give that information to Matt McCall, his crew chief, of where the car needs to be better. And if you stay in that top five, top, top, top six, and get there till the end of the race, anything can happen. We've seen late race restarts here, how crazy they can get. So, really, that's his job right now, is just stay in contention. Kyle Busch leading the Monster Energy Cup Series race from Kansas. This telecast presented by Outback Steakhouse. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. You're watching the Hollywood Casino 400 out front. It's Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Blaney, 
Kenseth and McMurray all running up in the top five. Let's go through the field brought to you by Nationwide. Let's start with Marty. Hey Rick, when Kyle Busch finished the round of 16 with two straight wins, who would have thought he would come into the cut race here in the round of 12, trying to make it in the round of eight, minus seven below the cut line. But they did that after 29th at Charlotte and 27th at Talladega. Very happy with the car. Adam Stevens told him a moment ago, everyone's 20 short for making it to the end of the segment. Run as hard as you can, Parker. And the guy trying to run him down is the four car of Kevin Harvick. And his crew chief, Rodney Church, told me coming into the playoffs, he felt like they were a fourth to fifth place car. But as they've entered the playoffs, and especially at the mile and a half that Charlotte and Chicago, they feel like the only car they can't beat is the 78. And what car are they on par with? The 18. He shows he's doing that right now as he keeps that 18 honest from second place. Behind him, young Ryan Blaney with an incredible drive from the back of the field to be in third place right now, just suffering with a bit of a loose condition as they've taken some big swings in that 21 car as he's moved to the field. Dave. When I ran into Matt Kent's spotter Jason Hedleski this morning he said Matt worked mostly the middle and lower groove as he's wont to do as a veteran driver but he's been told recently by the spotter that 18 car leading the race is working that high line you might want to move up just a little bit Marty. Jamie McMurray was able to complete the pass a moment ago on Jimmy Johnson. Now he's in the fifth position at the last mile and a half race at Charlotte. He finished, guess where, in fifth. But there's a little bit of a water concern on the one car right now. He said the temperature's under green, about 260. They said make sure all your fans are on correctly. He said I'm doing everything I can to cool it down, though, under caution, Parker. Marty behind him in sixth place is Chase Elliott, who's come from all the way from 15th place where he qualified in the top 10 to score points in the first stage and now get ahead of his more experienced teammate, Jimmy Johnson, just fighting a little bit of a loose condition in that car on exit, Dave. That's what Jimmy's been fighting as well, but the KG veteran knows it's about the race. Practiced outside the top 10 all weekend long, but I was assured this morning by crew chief Chad, Chad Knauss they'd be within that during the race, and that's happened. Kelly. Denny Hamlin came to this race 21 points above the cut line, but this team working hard to get even better. The crew chief, Mike Wheeler, told me they're just off from the best guys, and that makes them motivated and challenging themselves to continue to get better and better as a part of this 11 team. There you see he made the pass. Denny Hamlin now running seventh. A couple spots behind him is Clint Boyer, and what would a win here at Kansas mean for the guy who's from Kansas? Well, he compared it to winning the Daytona 500. He said, listen, I won't complain no matter where we get our next race, but winning at Kansas would be extra special for a lot of people in the Boyer family. And behind him, you see Brad Keselowski. Last week, he won at Talladega's Coochie. Paul Wolf told him that was a must win because they knew they wouldn't have a race-winning car here at Kansas. So what's next for them? Next week, Martinsville, he's called that another must win. This team is going to have to put it all on the line next week, Parker. And Kelly behind him is Dale Earnhardt Jr. is cut through the field using that high lane as you see him doing right there. I spoke to his crew chief Greg Ives before this race and I asked him what do you feel like the outlook is. He said if that outside lane comes in up next to the wall Dale Jr. is better than anyone at doing that guys. Thanks guys great run through the field there. Kyle Busch out front has a one point three second lead over Harvick Blaney and then Kenseth running back and forth. Well, Matt Kenseth still has some work to do to get himself into the round of eight, and restarts are going to be a huge part of this. So we're going to look back at one of the earlier restarts, watch where Matt Kenseth is, and watch how aggressive things get. See, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has got put basically four wide. Well, Matt Kenseth has a decision to make. Do I go here or do I not? Well, he sticks it into that hole, and you can see how close it gets with the 88 car, and Jamie Murray slides underneath him, but right there, contact. Jamie Matt Kenson had a decision to make, and then do I slide in front of the 88 or not? And as this race wears on, we're going to see those decisions become more and more valuable. We saw what happened last week when Chase Elliott, there was a hole there. Chase Elliott drove into that hole. It closed up quickly, ended up with a multi-car wreck. Those are the decisions that the drivers are going to have to make as this race progresses. You talk about the decisions and the cars that he was around. Well, the 88 is now behind him, running in 11th. Kenseth is running fourth. That one that he was racing, McMurray is behind him, running in fifth. So those decisions apparently have paid off to where Kenseth is in front of the guys that were maybe running a little more aggressive than he was at that point in time in the race. So here's the problem for Matt Kenseth. When he looks up, everybody he sees in his front windshield and out of the rear view window, out of the rear view mirror, they're all guys he's racing. So, you know, they're the top 10, with the exception of Boyer, are all playoff guys. So you're going to have you can't maybe not can have a good day. You might have to have a great day to move yourself in 
to the round of eight. And again, we'll keep the playoff leaderboard of the ghost points on the left side. Those are projections as far as where they are running right now and the points that they would receive if they stay there throughout the remainder of the race. And right now, three points below the cut line is the 20 of Matt Kenseth. So he's got to fight some way to get a few more points. Right now, Kyle Busch doing exactly what he needs to do running up front. The much welcome sunshine beating down on this mile and a half track as we look from up above aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. Kyle Busch continuing to lead. But the battle right now for the last spot in the playoffs between Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth. Jimmy Johnson three points in front of Kenseth. See that Kenseth running four positions better than Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson needs to gain three positions on the racetrack to get into a tie as far as points. Dave. And the car has still been just a little free. Remember, made a lot of adjustment last time to try to fix that. Has not been able to get around his teammate, Chase Elliott, who runs in front of him. To the left, Matt Kenseth just reporting to his crew, I picked up a bit of a shake but it hasn't gotten any worse. They're both planning to pit in about 10 laps or sooner. And because of stage points, the possibility exists, Jimmy Johnson, if he gains two more spots, he could then leapfrog the 20, because that would end up being four points. He would get the points for the stage and then the points for the finished position. So those are so valuable right now, and these teams are looking at every single position on the racetrack and every point they can gain. And it's an, it's interesting that you have a seven time champion in Jimmy Johnson and we're talking about the possibility of him being eliminated. He spoke about how he handles the pressure. And to be honest, I didn't know or didn't believe I was good at handling pressure until I was put under the most pressure I've ever experienced in my life and trying to win a cup championship. I was able to win the first one and then we won five in a row. And I didn't know I had that in me. And it's something that I kind of grew into and learned about myself and, and I think experiences helped strengthen um, that, that moment for me. 
he seems always so calm cool and collected but seven championships later everyone fears the 48 as far as one of the best title contenders and you honestly can't know how you handle those things until you're there you cannot simulate being in a championship battle and Steve you know as well as I do it's easy to say I'm going to do this but once you get in the middle of that the world changes yeah pressure pressure and emotion changes sports Marty Hey, Steve, now the big debate for crew chiefs. Adam Stevens just told Kyle Busch a moment ago, I need 20 more laps out of you. So that's a pretty long run for these guys, but there could be a debate that you might want to split this stage in half, right? So if you're Jamie McMurray, someone below the cut line, you need a win. Why would you not come early to take on tires? Because we've seen what an advantage fresh tires are. Well, we've seen a bunch of cars hit pit road already. They were basically all the non-playoff cars. I think they're gambling because they feel that they can risk losing positions we're still waiting for the first playoff car to pit, hit pit road, Rick, because they're going to lose positions and points. One of the interesting things about this run right here, it currently is the longest green flag run of the day. So now tire wear is going to be very important to keep our eye on it, and the 20 looks like they are going to take advantage of coming to pit road early. Yep, Rick, he made the move. They knew they were in their window, as I said, about 10 laps ago. They knew they couldn't make it to the end. So they'll get four fresh Goodyear tires, a Phillips Sunoco fuel, and really no changes to the 20 right now. As for Jimmy Johnson, he'll also get four tires. He'll get a little bit of a chassis adjustment for that loose race car and a fill of Sunoco fuel as well. Key here, don't make any mistakes on pit road, but don't make any mistakes leaving or entering. That's speeding by the drivers. They'll be watching that tachometer, Parker. And guys, if Kyle, Kyle Busch, the leader, is going to stay out as long as he does, the four is going to short pit him here. He's going to come down and get four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. He's just been suffering from losing rear grip as the run goes on. He has to move up to the top side. He said the car's been the best it's been, but he still needs more security in the rear of that car. Also pitting there from third place is Ryan Blaney in the 21 car. We noted how many cars he's passed in this race, but he's also suffering a free condition right now and having to get it tightened up a little bit, Kelly. Denny Hamlin was running six. He said that his uh, car started off really tight. It was even chattering in the front, but then got freer as he ran four good your tires, Marty. Kelly, so much for that plan. Kyle Busch came to pit road way earlier than Adam Stevens had promised, but that just shows you how fresh these Goodyear tires are, how important they are. Left side wedge adjustment. Kyle saying he was having a tough time keeping up with the car, which got extremely loose during the run. Steve, I'll put you back on the crew chief, the pit box. If you're the one of Jamie McMurray, do you decide, I'm going to stay out because right now he's leading this race? Well, I think he's losing too much time. He's going to have to pit, but this is the race for the lead right here. The four has been to pit road already. The 18 just left pit road. I'm waiting to see the 18 come into the picture. Here it is. If the 18 can blend in front of the four, he'll keep the lead. That's really nice work by that 18 car, pinning a lap later, Jeff, but still staying in front of the four car. I'd say even gained a little bit of space. He entered 1.2 seconds ahead of the four car, Kevin Harvick. And I would say he's got the start finish line is going to be about the same, maybe a little bit of gain by the four, but not much. Marty. Well, there's your answer, Jamie McMurray, leaving pit road right now, cleanly into a stall, right side wedge adjustment. He said the car started way too tight, then it got too free throughout the run. So McMurray choosing not to stay out there, Rick, and maybe gain a little track position. They came down with everybody else. So McMurray, we'll see how he cycles out when he comes back onto the racetrack. And Rick, you mentioned the one of Jamie McMurray. I don't think he can afford it because remember, he has to win the race. Right. He doesn't need to win the second stage. But two of Brad Keselowski, though, last week's winner, he's here basically to make his car a little bit better for Texas in the upcoming round and maybe steal a playoff point by winning this stage. So I do like this call by Paul Wolf. He just hasn't had the best car all day. Why not try something different? And he has a few other cars that stayed on the racetrack with him. We have Kurt Busch in second, Danica Patrick third, Paul Menard, and Michael McDowell. Those five are in front of Kyle Busch. When they pit, Kyle Busch then would become the leader. That's why we showed you the blend between Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. Kozlowski, Kurt Busch, Danica Patrick, Paul Menard, as well as Michael McDowell, all were on pit road around lap 82, so that's 50 laps ago. We think the fuel window will be upwards of 60. That would be the outer limit. Kelly. Rick, you saw a little bit of a delay as Denny Hamlin in the purple 11 car was leaving his pit box. Well, it was just a miscommunication after they dropped the jack. His crew chief, Mike Wheeler, was saying hard out, hard out, but it sounded to Denny like he was saying hold up, which is why Denny hesitated. You'll see it here after they drop him down and he pauses just a minute. 
And after he got going back on track, he asked Mike, what was that? Was that hold up or hard out? And, well, they were telling him to go hard out. Uh, I don't think they'll be saying that again next time it comes to pit road. Yeah, Kelly, you have to use clear words. The simplest word to use is clear. Because, you know, so many words sound like whoa and go right. sound yeah. the same. I mean, you just have to use simple, clear words. Clear all the way. You know, that's you've got to keep that simple. And right now, Denny Hamlin running back in 17th after that miscue on pit road. Brad Kozlowski continuing to stay out on the track, and he is leading at Kansas. This isn't grandma's chicken, but she's okay with that. Introducing McDonald's new buttermilk crispy tenders. They're battered and breaded to perfection to give you the ultimate juicy bite. Made with 100% white meat and no artificial preservatives, colors, or flavors. But don't take our word for it. Go ask grandma yourself. It's playoff time, so gear up with the pit crew. Get the latest NASCAR t-shirts, hats, and die casts at the NASCAR shop. Visit nascar.com slash shop today for all your favorite driver's gear. And Rutledge Wood, I believe you have caught up with a Hall of Famer. That's right, Rick. I sure have. I found Mark Martin down here on pit road watching, being a part of stuff, supporting. Mark, did you know today was going to be this crazy points-wise with the cutoff race? Well, I sure didn't expect it, but I want to give a shout-out to Rachel. I know she's watching. I, You know, this is, this is crazy already, and the race isn't over, over yet, but I want to come, you know, because this, and see the drama for the, uh, the round of eight and uh, hang out with Roush Racing, Roush Fenway Racing, and cheer on Trevor Bain with the old six car and of course Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Uh, trying to fight his way into the round of eight. So it's been a great time. I've got to see a lot of friends that I don't get to see very often. So it's a lot of fun. Guys, you know it's a big deal. If Mark says this is a race you can't miss, it's true. Absolutely, you always listen to Hall of Famers. And there's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. right now running in the 19th position. He's 
caught right now a lap down. That's because there's still drivers that haven't come to pit road. Kozlowski, Kyle, Kyle Busch actually has been to pit road. He's made his way up to second now, but he's 16 seconds behind Kozlowski. Dave. And the team is not down, but they're realistic in talking with crew chief Brian Patty today about their round experience. Of course, Talladega was where he won to get into the playoffs, but it bit him last week when he crashed out. He said, Talladega giveth and Talladega taketh away. This weekend then was not necessarily anything but a must-win situation, and so far, the car has not been great for Ricky. It's been loose most all the day and hard to make up any positions, Kelly. Brad Keselowski, who's been leading this race, stretching out this run, finally coming to pit road. Brad's saying that he's tight at the two-thirds mark, but not bad after that. They give him a Terra for a clear windshield. It's going to be four Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel, and an air pressure adjustment for that two-car. 12-second stop there. there Looks like they put a little tape on the front of that. Try to help a little bit with the downforce, a little aerodynamic assistance. And that right there will basically hand the lead as you've been reporting to the 18 of Kyle Busch who pitted earlier. Nice pit work on and off pit road. Kelly? Hey, Steve, just listening into the strategy right now for the 78 car. Remember, they had to come to pit road um, unexpectedly after Martin had a vibration. That turned out something had gotten trapped behind the wheel. So once they gave him uh, four fresh tires, he was good to go. Well, now they're trying to go on a fuel save to try to stretch out to the end of this stage. Uh, Martin saying that he's using the draft to help him. His crew chief telling him to let off the gas earlier, earlier and earlier. So he is in fuel save mode, Parker. And Kelly, the car that's going to end up second place when all things cycle out here, Kevin Harvick just came across radio saying he thinks he has a loose wheel. So we're keeping tabs on this. The team kind of got together, got some of the tires together, but right now it's slowed a little bit down. I think he's going to assess the situation and see if he does have a loose wheel. 14 laps to go. Do you gamble with that? Is that something that you gamble right now in this situation? Yeah, for me as the driver, I just have to evaluate how bad the vibration is and look and understand there's 13 laps left. It's not a bad vibration. I'm going to have to ride it out. We've already seen how the 42 of Kyle Larson had an issue that dropped him below the cutoff line if something happens to the four. Right now he's comfortable, but that might not be the same way if he does have a tire go bad. Think about that 78, Rick. That'd be 69 laps on a tank of fuel. That's a long way. Let's go NASCAR not stop.
You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Kansas. This telecast presented by Outback Steakhouse. And Sunday night is football night. Matt Ryan, the Falcons are in Foxborough for a Super Bowl rematch with Tom Brady and the Patriots. Mike Tirico and Dan Patrick host football night in America. That's tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, only on NBC. Hey, Rick, just a little note. I know you really want to know this. Patriots lead in AFC East. Really? You, the yep. four and two Patriots? Four and two. Very good. Marty. Hey, Rick, so far Kyle Busch has led 93 laps. Today looks like he might collect 10 more points in just a, a few more laps here by winning stage two. Here's what he had to say on the radio a moment ago. Remind me about engine toys. Now, that may not seem like much, but Kyle Busch and Adam Stevens have a little system worked out. Kyle, randomly during the race, will tell Adam, remind me about this, remind me about that. They're little code words. And then when they meet on Monday morning, he and Adam will have a conversation. He said, you told me to remind you about this. What was that? And Kyle will go, oh, yeah, now I remember. Caution on the racetrack. But, Jeff, sometimes you relay those things to a crew chief and a driver. That's when that communication happens. That's how you make a team better. And it looks like maybe we will see again a caution that ends the stage. So we were coming up on the final laps of stage two, and the caution comes out for Brett Moffitt in the 83. Rick, you heard the report from Pit Road about the 78 stretching the fuel. A huge break for the 78 right here because now he should be able to shut it off, coast around under yellow, and either complete the stage or if Pit Road opens, come and get some fuel. And again, let's look back on why the caution is out. This is the fourth caution of the day, and there's Brett Moffitt. Already against the wall when we see him. It's a relatively hard hit though. The damage on the car you can see right there. It's damaged pretty badly. So the 78 trying to nurse the fuel to make it all the way to the end of this stage or at least to pit road. Yeah, time, quickie yellow. Quickie yellow, pit road is open. Wow, Rick, this is a tough decision right here. There's currently four to go. Their NASCAR's coming to three to go. So we've seen this a few times where NASCAR can open pit road, maybe get them one to go. Even if they don't, it's going to be either a one or a two lap shootout. It's going to be a tough decision for these playoff cars. That quickie yellow means that everyone can pit. You not just the lead lap cars this first time by. That tells me NASCAR is going to do their best to restart this race. And we're seeing the 18 of Kyle Busch as well as the four of Kevin Harvick. They've made their way onto pit road. Yeah, Rick, Adam Stevens said we don't have a choice. If we don't pit, we're going to get run over. So fresh tires here for Kyle Busch. They really wanted to be able to end the stage there and pit once that stage was over. He said it's free no matter what I do, Dave. Buddy Matt Kenseth now leaving pit road after a four-tire stop. He said it was definitely looser on that run. They jumped for four tires, Parker. Right, Dave, and uh, Ryan Blaney here. Well, have pitted as well, and he was loose in as that run goes on. He just started to get looser and looser, and he said his crew chief said that many cars are fighting the same thing, so they've did a little adjustment on the 21 for this restart. So we talk about decisions within the race. Jeff, you said at the top of the show the small decisions. Well, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson and the 20 of Matt Kenseth have been deadlocked in this battle for this last playoff spot. They keep swapping, what, two or three points. Well, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, he stays on the racetrack on old tires. The 20 of Matt Kenseth pits. We're going to have to let the field come back around the start finish line and look at timing and scoring to really know how many spots there will be between these two race cars. But this could be one of those small decisions, Jeff. Will old tires score points or will new tires on the 20 drive up through the field and will he score points at the end of this stage? And the reason you said we have to wait to, for timing and scoring to update because we don't know how many cars are going to be between the 48 and the 20. And there's no doubt the 20 car is going to be coming much faster than the 48. But how many cars will he have to go through? It's, this is going to be, but these decisions are so difficult. Also, Denny Hamlin, he stayed out on the racetrack as well. He also did not pit. And they're coming to one to go. One to go. It will be a one lap shootout. Make sure to tune in on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on NASCAR Radio Channel 90. That's NBC Sports on Sirius XM to the morning drive this week. Kyle Petty will join the guys again Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern for NBC Sports on Sirius XM. Let's listen in to the 48 radio for Jimmy Johnson. So as you saw, the majority of those guys pitted. So you're going to be on the front row here. I need you to take advantage of it. Get out there and get away. Come back here with the top 10. Interesting. Come back here with the top 10. It's going to be a one lap, one lap shootout for a top 10 spot. 
Sunday, Rick. He was 10th, so anything above 10th will be gravy. Just depends on who behind him has the best tires, and quite a few of them came to pit road under this caution. Parker. And guys, one of those cars that pitted was Kevin Harvick out of second place. You remember, just a couple laps ago before that caution came out, we talked about him having a loose wheel. It turned out to be the left rear wheel. They actually had maybe a lug nut or two loose on that wheel, but they felt like it would hold, and they were able to check it out as the car came in. As you can see there, you can see the one of the studs there and openings is actually going clogged up, and that's what happens when you have a loose wheel area. The four up front, Hamlin, Johnson, Kozlowski, and Stenhouse Jr. all did not come to pit road. Kyle Busch did, though. He restarts in the fifth position. Let's see if those older tires can hold them off for one lap. Matt Kenseth charging hard on the bottom of the racetrack, as is Harvick on the outside. The 18 of Kyle Busch gets caught behind the 48. Here comes Harvick, though. Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski working through three and four. Johnson Harvick dropping. on the outside. Johnson continues to fall back. The 11 of Denny Hamlin is going to win stage two. Johnson, does he hang on to a top 10 spot? He did. One point for Johnson, but Kenseth, who he's been fighting with, finished fourth in that stage. And how about the call by Denny Hamler and his team to stay out? Think about this, that earned them points, but also playoff points for the next round. Hamlin, Harvick, Kozlowski, Kenseth, and Kyle Busch end up top five in stage two. Stage two winner Denny Hamlin will of course be making his way to pit road now that pit road is open they'll head down the back stretch here one last time before they make it to pit road but we want to look back at how close it was for Jimmy Johnson to actually gain a point in that stage. Well you can see him battling with Clint Boyer and what is that two or three inches. Yeah. For one point. 
And that one point, we've seen points matter. That was for 10th position. We've seen one point matter. They're just, we've seen them tie at the end of rounds. We've seen them separated by one point. So I know it doesn't sound like much, but as this race evolves, that could be the diff difference between moving on in the playoffs and not. Now, a different strategy, though, for the 20 of Kenseth. They had a little, uh, they had a little more time on their tires. Dave. And so it was a wash for Jimmy Johnson where he was running while it was green was 10th and he got back there barely as we saw now four tires and adjustments for Jimmy Johnson Kelly. And you see Brad Keselowski in that two car he's been just a little bit tight across the center they're going to give him four Goodyear tires and Sunoco feeling at the bottom of your screen you'll see Denny Hamlin in the 11 car he said that he starts off tight but then it really just trends to get freer and freer it's going to be an air pressure adjustment. Four Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel. Race off pit road brought to you by NASCAR Heat 2 video game. Hamlin, Keselowski, Johnson and Boyer holding their spots as they came onto pit road. Ty Dillon gains a few as does Almondinger, Bain, Busher, and Stenhouse Jr. losing five spots on pit road. Want to talk with Denny Hamlin. The stage two winner is brought to you by NASCAR Heat 2 video game. Hey, Denny, it's Burton. You with us? Step four. Tell us about that call the wheels made your crew chief to earn that stage win. Yeah, I, you know, in the position we're in, we, we definitely want to take the guaranteed points. Uh, you never know what can happen. Um, of course, nothing's a guarantee, but we felt like, you know, starting up front there with just a one lap shootout. Uh, we had a good chance to get a bunch of points there and, and just give us some insurance. All right, bud. Thanks for taking time, man. Good luck the rest of the day. Yeah, Jeff, I'm glad that you weren't the bearer of bad news there while you were talking with Denny Hamlet, but he will be told now that he was speeding on pit road, as was the two of Brad Kozlowski. I can promise you I was not going to be the one to tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Bank of America. Life better connected. Chevrolet, the most awarded car company two years in a row. And by Outback Steakhouse. Aussie rules. Well, there's nothing like attending a NASCAR race, and now the playoffs, they're in full swing. Some of the most intense side-by-side -side racing in years and even more dramatic moments than ever before. Visit NASCAR.com slash tickets to purchase tickets today. Let's listen in on the 48 radio. That didn't work out very good. Damn it. The 11. Run it. I can see that. A little uncomfortable. Maybe communication there between driver and crew chief? Just a big gamble within the race trying to get stage points, but it's got him set way back in the field. 
Yeah, I mean, look at the playoff leaderboard right here. Both stages have run. So now it's basically these are the points they'll be awarded at the end of the race. Currently in their position, the 48 is eight points out relative to the 20 of Matt Kenseth, who is starting on the front row. Kenseth up front came to pit road on lap 157. A little fresher tires now for Jimmy Johnson. He was on pit road at lap 163. Great restart for Kevin Harvick. Kenseth running second. Kyle Busch, the winner of stage one, is third. Eric Jones, Ryan Blaney in the top five. McMurray Elliott, Austin Dillon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has fallen back down to 13th, but was up in the top 10. Suarez and Kurt Busch have jumped up in front of him. Jimmy Johnson running in the 11th spot, trying to gain back some of those positions. The difference now four points separating the 48 and the 20 two champions in the Monster Energy Cup Series right now fighting for a spot in the playoffs and the round of eight. Well, Jimmy Johnson right now I know it's only one lap but he does have one lap less tires and that's a heat cycle on those tires Steve it's not really that it's one lap so he's got to take advantage of that little bit fresher tires from the cars in front of him to earn some of that track position back. But as you mentioned right now, if the race ended right now, he would miss the playoffs, the next round of the playoffs by five points. Yeah, so I mean, the other thing you have to look at is the 18 on the right side of your screen. If the 20 loses a spot, that's a point. But these other drivers, they're not guaranteed anything. The 24 plus 17, the 21 plus 13, 17 to 13 positions. The 42 lost more than that with a mechanical failure, an accident, a mechanical failure, and we could have an entire another race team on the edge. Dave? Looking at Jimmy Johnson on the left, now moving up to the 12th position. He was told to be easy on the tires and, quote, you'll roll right back up to these guys. As for the guy on the right, Matt Kenseth in good position now with that gamble to get stage points. He stayed out on the fresh tires and will try to hold on to this position through the next round of stops. And it's incredible how that late race, re late race restart in the second stage has affected this race. Kevin Harvick's now leading. He got by Kyle Busch in all that race with got, racing around guys with older tires. Matt Kenseth got in front of Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has dominated this race. Now he's lost his track position. I guarantee you his car drives differently behind these cars than it did when he was in the lead. And by the way, Eric Jones, through all this, he's worked himself up to fourth. A rookie driver, not in the playoffs. Had a really good shot of winning the race yesterday. A late race move by Christopher Bell got by him, but wouldn't it be great for Eric Jones to follow that disappointment yesterday with a win today? And remember Jim Wildman Watson, who a fabricator for the 77 team. They've got a sticker on the side of the car. Jim Wildman Watson passed away yesterday while he was here with the team. So heavy hearts for the 77 team, but what better way to celebrate Jim's life than a great finish here, potentially even the first win for Eric Jones in the Cup Series. Right behind him, Ryan Blaney. Blaney starting at the back of this field has now been able to work his way up into the top five. A great run for the 21 team and looking to move on into the round of eight. Yeah, I mean, this, this young man has really just upped his performance as you would hope, as you would expect a driver to do in the playoffs. But I'm not sure you can ask that or guarantee that out of a young driver with so little experience. But Ryan Blaney has done that. He continues to answer the call. Had that issue after qualifying. Started 40th. Last car to start today's race. And he has moved all the way up inside the top five and did it relatively easily and with some nice strategy from on top of the pit box. Got a car, Got a car, Got a car up into the wall. the wall in turn three. That's the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. One That's of the must win situations for this team. Four off bad. Dave. Yep, Rick, he's got a cut tire that sent him into the wall. You can see the right side of that 17 car flat spotted all day long. It's been a struggle 
at one time they were asking Ricky, just anything, one thing can we do to you? And, and, and he said, I've just been telling you, it is a loose race car, but they believe here it may have been a cut tire that set the 17 to the high side and into the wall. Yeah, you can see the sparks on the, off the right front, so clearly the tire was down. Hard hit for the 17 and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And Rick, this really, Marty reported it earlier in the day about the limited eight sets of tires for all of these cars. Well, you know, most of the playoff cars, most of the leaders have put somewhere between four and five sets on. That gives them three or four sets of tires left. But this has only been a nine lap run. But we watched Jimmy Johnson sink through the field in just one lap. So we know tires are worth a lot. So after nine laps, Still 92 to go in this race. We talked about how many yellows were in the spring race. Is this going to turn into that? Are we going to have a rash of yellows? When are these crew chiefs going to decide to put tires on? Right now, the top 13, with the exception of Jimmy Johnson, they all came to pit road just before the end of stage two. And how do you make that decision, Steve? As a crew chief, how do, you have to gamble if you're going to run out of tires or not. How do you make that decision? Well, I mean, that's really it. It's risk versus reward. If you don't pit, everyone else does, you're going to lose your track position. But the question is, do you have to hold on to your tires? I'm not sure what's worse, running out of tires or not pitting now and then having the race finish when you have tires in the pits. So, and you see there's a split decision. Some cars stay on the racetrack while the majority of cars come to pit road. Eric Jones was running fourth. He is the highest scored car that has made his way on to pit road as well as the 48 days. Rick, Jimmy Johnson came down pit road because the change they made last time may have been too severe. It really made the center of the corner too snug for the driver. Marty? Jamie McMurray, another playoff driver, said his car is too tight from the middle off. He also wants a tear off pulled here because he's having a hard time seeing. This will leave McMurray with two sets of tires, but puts them different than everybody else. We'll see if those tires pay off. Coming off pit road, Eric Jones is going to be able to come out just behind the 78. Teammate, Mark Trucks Jr. The pressure when the playoff starts continues to ramp up. Now, an elimination race at Kansas. Kyle Busch won stage one. Denny Hamlin wins stage two. 
under 90 laps to go to determine the eight drivers still in the hunt for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Championship. Drivers that came to pit road just on this last caution, the 31 and the five both got caught for speeding. The five making his 500th start, Casey Kane, and obviously not the result that he's looking for up to this point. The 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. also speeding on pit road, although they've been working on the damage on the right side of that car. Really big thanks going out to Coca-Cola for allowing us to have the helmet cam once again. Denny Hamlin, he's been very generous also with giving him or giving us that vantage point that we've been able to see. Let's listen in to Kevin Harvick's radio. I feel like everybody just fitted there with the stay out if we can. I think we probably need to save these tires for a little bit. I don't know what you think. Don't really have a choice, do we? I think that's it, right? And now the question is, Marty keeps talking about tires. Well, how many new sets of tires do they have left? They could put some older tires on, but the goal is sticker tires are definitely the best. Brand new tires are worth speed. So you heard the strategy. We're going to stay out for a couple of reasons. Keep that track position, but also let's keep this set of tires. In the front three rows, they all stayed out on this caution. We'll see how it works out for them. Harvick and Kenseth making up a row one. Fan out to four wide as they enter turn one. Great restart for Kevin Harvick. He's in front, Kenseth, Kyle Busch. Then it's Blaney in the 21. What a recovery he has made on the day. Harvick, Kyle Busch, Kenseth, Blaney. And Eric Jones, the rookie, running fifth. Clint Boyer in his home state from Emporia, Kansas, currently in the sixth position. Martin Truex Jr., Suarez, McMurray, and Chase Elliott all in the top ten. Big question mark for the 48 team. They're three points out of making it into the round of eight right now as they run currently just outside the top ten in 11th. They've essentially split the strategy compared to what the competition, Matt Kenseth and his team have done. Parker. Guys, just another tire update there. You see Chase Elliott, who's 14 points to the good right there. He actually, when I just looked and counted in his pits, only has two sets of new sticker tires left. They also have two sets of scuffs, but kind of concerning with how many laps we have left, they only have two sets of stickers on that team. So once again, the tire situation has come up for this race here at Kansas. Now, if it continues to go green, they would have to come to pit road one more time. And they would then, of course, change one set of tires. Him having two, plenty. He'd be good. But that's if it continues to go green the remainder of the way. You know, if you get just a couple more quick yellows, nine or ten laps in, they're going to have to make a decision. But I'll be honest, these cars that stayed out on those nine-lap tires, Jeff, are doing a really nice job of keeping their track position. Harvick continues to lead. Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, and Ryan Blaney all have those nine laps on their tires. Yeah, people may be wondering why limit tires. Why not just let them buy as many as they want? Well, the car owners worked with NASCAR to try to find a way to save a little bit of money and try to not have to buy sets that they weren't using. So they lowered the number a lot of races. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but in races like this where you get a lot of cautions early, things can get tight toward the end of the race. Let's go to Dave. Rick, I want to tell you about a story that's special to Jimmy Johnson this weekend, and it's about a fan who got to do a meet and greet with Jimmy at his motor coach today. Her name is Cindy Gross, and she had planned to meet Jimmy at some point in her life because she was such a huge fan. They live about 45 minutes from here. The deal here is that Cindy is meeting Jimmy without her husband, Kevin. You see, Kevin and Cindy had gone to Pocono this year to watch Jimmy race, and then on their way to Michigan, there was a tragic highway accident in which Kevin lost his life. They were to have met Jimmy that weekend at Michigan. Instead, now Cindy gets a chance to meet her hero, and she wore a T-shirt today that told of uh, their honor of Jimmy and their honor of Kevin, her husband, she was so happy to be here today, meet him, and then watch him today, hoping he can win here at Kansas again. So many of the family were joining them, all wearing those T-shirts that said Kevin's Warriors. So they were able to 
get to meet Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, and I love to hear stories about Jimmy doing things like that and when they go public because that's the Jimmy Johnson that I've kind of grown up with at Hendrick Motorsports. He's always so giving, uh, so ruthless on the racetrack. A seven-time champion, you have to be aggressive, you have to be ruthless, and he is. He's a ruthless competitor, but just a tremendous amount of give back through the community. Just really a, a great guy, a great guy to know, a great guy to be around. And what's amazing to me about Jimmy Johnson and many of these drivers is they'll give that time on a day that could determine whether or not they're going to have a chance to win a championship. And we see so these ad, these drivers, these athletes, they are so unbelievably good, even in stressful moments, of taking a break and saying, hey. Oh, oh, around goes the 48 as he was coming out of turn four, sliding through the grass. Caution comes out again. He was right up behind the back of the 41. And the back end came around just as he was coming out of turn four. He was in 10th position. Wonder how much damage is done sliding through that grass. You can see he's right in front of the 41 car and it just comes around on him. Right there, Steve, the right front digging in the grass. See the back of the hood. It's relatively fortunate, though. I don't see a lot of damage. That hood kind of will blow up at times in the back, some of the way the hinges are designed. I have to see. This is another great shot at it. Great view from the 88 car. You see, it just came around on him, but that's... It's a good example of how, you know, these drivers aren't just riding around. You're driving these cars to the very edge, and once you cross over that edge, it's easy to get out of control. This right here is the shot you want to see. Luckily, it seems like you know, there's a lot of rain overnight, so you're just concerned that this is very muddy. You're going to dig in, but it seems like you kind of stayed on top of the grass. I'm sure it, it moves some things around. The question is, has it bent anything out of sorts enough where they won't be able to repair it. You mentioned the hood. The right side of the hood is definitely up, it seems like. We've got bigger issues with the body on the car right now, so I think we just got to... And you heard the communication going from driver to crew chief. I think when you get a closer look at it, you'll disagree with the hood. I, I can see it on both corners of the hood. Now decision again for all these other leaders. When do you put tires on? Once uh, again, we see up. half the cars stay on the racetrack and a bunch come to pit road. Dave? Matt Kenseth had three fresh sticker sets left, Steve, so he'll go ahead and change four here and get Sunoco fuel. Jimmy Johnson will make his way down pit road now, and I'm not sure about the disagreeing part because Chad Knauss had already decided to go to work on the right front hood area of that car. You see the bear bond, the big pieces of tape that the teams are allowed to use to repair the race car. They'll consider putting one of those on to keep the hood down, Parker. And Dave, Ryan Blaney, who had one more set of tires, then the leader of Kevin Harvick having four sets, came down, got four Goodyear tires, and got that car a little bit looser for the middle. 20 and 78, racing off of pit road, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson going to work. His championship possibilities just 78 laps away from going away.
Kevin Harvick leads the Monster Energy Cup Series race from Kansas. This telecast presented by Outback Steakhouse. Enjoying some Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Kansas Speedway. Only 75 laps remaining. Want to listen in to a little radio from the four team and how they're already looking at these playoffs. The way they sit right now, the 42 would be in, 48 would be out, 20's out, 1's out, 17's out. 48 is still rolling though. Uh, so he'll probably get some points back for the end. All right, look at the points as they run on the left side of the screen. We just heard it. Rodney Chose breaking down. That is the points as they run. We monitor this all during the race because the teams monitor it. Jeff, this is basically who can make the playoffs. Kyle Larson, this is something he wants to see as he's in the garage with a blown up engine. Yeah, some people question whether you should do points as they run now. But I'm going to tell you something. Rodney Childress is looking at it. I think it's fair for us to be looking at it. <laughs> Absolutely. Kevin Harvick on the inside. Kyle Busch spins the tires on the restart. Had a little bit of a shove from behind him and the 24 of Chase Elliott. Here comes Martin Trex Jr. in the 78 on the outside of that 14 of Clint Boyer. 48 around Up into again, the guys. wall. It's the 48 one more time around. And so the caution again comes out. Just after the restart, we see the 48 way up against the wall, and one entry gets around. Never really made big impact. I think the biggest issue for the 48 right now is that whatever issue they had before this wreck, and also they just used another set of tires, they could get to the point where they run out of tires. And Jeff, they were down a set already. They had two stickers before that stop and it glued up another set. So they are uh, they're in dire straits there. So no major impact, I don't think, Steve. No, I don't see I don't see an impact, but I'm asking NASCAR right now. I want to know if the 48 ever cleared the five-minute clock. Remember, he was in the last accident, so he was put on the clock. The team came to pit road, made the repairs. That was fine. But the only way to clear that clock is to make minimum speed. Well, now. Which takes an entire lap. Which takes an entire lap. If he didn't make minimum speed, then he's still on the clock, and it's the same amount that has been used. So NASCAR is saying they have not made minimum speed. So not only is he still on the clock, but, you know, it's the totality of the two. So we're going to have to see right here, if they come to Perot, they're going to have to be very efficient with their repairs. The worst thing that can happen to the 48 is just time out and right. go to the garage area. And again, we mentioned the 42 of Kyle Larson has to be looking at this and saying, there's still a chance. I still have a chance. If the 20 has a problem, which it's not out of the realm of possibility because we've seen it happen with numerous cars already today, well, the right 42 now, could still be in. Well, right now, Matt Kenseth is in 13th position, right? He just pitted, working his way back up, had a really good restart to get up to 13th, but he's only two points ahead of Kyle Larson if the race ended right now. So uh, I've got the word for the 48. They did not make minimum speed, so they're still on the clock from the last accident. And they used roughly, they have a, roughly three minutes, 20 seconds left of those five minutes. They used about a minute 40, give or take a few seconds. I don't have the official clock here, but to give you an idea where they're at, so they still have a little over three minutes left. I'm sure Chad and will come to Pitt Road here. We know they need four tires, but now they also can repair that body. But very important to be mindful. We saw that communication last week cost them a spot whether they could or couldn't work on it under red that same sort of communication issue about this clock could be very costly to the 48 i'm hey, sure steve. chad can now so with seven championships dave i'm sure chad understands this very clearly here's my question did they not make minimum speed because they didn't go line to line to record a time because they were fast that's correct dave basically okay. minimum speed has to be a total lap time they never completed a lap so the clock has not been cleared so and Jimmy, they, no, yeah, sorry, Rick. So Jimmy knows he's got four flat tires, so they're going to come in. They're going to change those and work just a little bit harder on that 48 car to make it drivable for Jimmy. They told him after that last restart, we need you to go from about 26 to eighth, they figured. I don't know how they were doing their math particularly, but they wanted him to be on it because they've got to move forward to make up points. 
You see the clock that we've talked about. It's in three minutes. That's a long time under yellow. The most important thing is just no. Right? I, I mean, it's not, I don't think they're up against anything that they can't repair. Jeff, the concern is, though, is just, you know, these are simple things that you have to understand. Well, I think the concern is how did he spin out that quickly? And, yes. and, and that, so what's wrong? I mean, what's wrong with the car that Jimmy Johnson drove into turn three and it spun out that easily? That's my concern. What is it that we cannot see that's, that the issue is? Another issue is you saw the crew member come over pit wall. If you have too many crew members while you're on the clock, you're done. That is the penalty. If you go over pit wall with too many crew members on the five minute clock, you go to the garage. Those are those types of mistakes that this 48 cannot afford in this situation. They continue to work on the hood and the bear bond that they have put on both sides of the hood to try to keep it down. And Again, they went through the grass the first time they spun coming off turn four. Yeah, they're not looking underneath the back of the car anymore. So that leads me to believe they don't have anything major wrong with the rear suspension. Which, which would have been a fear of mine why he spun out so easily is that maybe they had something wrong, something happened to the car when he went through the grass. So the clock starts when they get onto pit road and when it'll stop when they exit pit road. So that five minute clock that they're on, they still have to make minimum speed for that clock to be cleared. And the clock will be cleared the second they make minimum speed. So Jeff, you talked about the, the 48 who's continues to be loose and spin out. Some of that could actually be damaged maybe. You know, we saw on this first accident and you said it, you were concerned about the grass. So as the 48 slides right here and the nose bounces through the grass, why it obviously hasn't done a huge amount of damage. It didn't tear the nose off or buckle any fenders. It could have moved the location of that splitter. So as we go into our NASCAR Heat 2 wind tunnel, why is that important? Well, Jeff, you know very well, this is the air going under the splitter. It's kind of dirty. As that splitter seals, the air gets much faster and makes a ton of downforce. The driver can definitely feel that. Yeah, quite simply, just cleaning that air up, getting the front of the car lower to the racetrack, it just makes downforce from underneath of the car. And when you don't make that downforce, the car is much harder to drive. So now the 48, you know, you set that very exactly in the garage area, but the left side skirts also could have damage. You see right there how important they are to seal that air. So, you know, those are things that are set by the fractions of the inch in the garage, Rick. They're not meant to slide through the grass. Marty? Hey, guys, remember when we interviewed Kyle Larson earlier after he fell out of the race and he said he was going to stay here and watch the race? Well, good to his word, Kyle Larson is still at the racetrack. And as he said, hoping and praying and crossing all of his fingers. And right now, believe it or not, after going out early, the, the 42 just one point out. So he's still here at the track watching with everybody else. Harvick and Kyle Busch once again making up row one. Join the party in the top three. The 77 of Eric Jones and the 24. And around goes the 77 of Jones. Almost up over the wall as they hit hard. Is that Kenseth? The 20 of Kenseth involved, as is the one of McMurray. A big wreck coming out of turn two. Inside, watch your inside. I will roll, guys. Four flat. Riding along with the 20, you see the steering wheel shaking. Damage to the 20 now. Yeah, one thing though, look at these marks on top of the steering wheel. They're relatively close to the top. That me tells me that it's not major damage to the front suspension. Not the same luck for the one of Jamie McMurray. You saw him, his day I'm sure is over. Huge damage for the one. So the 20 is gonna come to the attention of the crew on pit road. Now you just reset our conversation about the five minute clock. Now Matt Kenseth is on it, he has a full five minutes. Jimmy Johnson, he never got off of it though, right? They didn't run a whole lap, so That's his correct. clock is still running. You can't have more than six guys, okay? You can't have more than six. And you heard right there, you can't have more than six. Remember that penalty I discussed. If you have an extra guy, major penalty. And it looks as though they may have just had seven right there. They're working on the 20 though. They continue to work on the 20 to try to get it back out onto the track. Rick, they had told Matt Kenseth, you have to finish 14th or better based on what we know with the points. This is going to hurt. And you see the body damage is good to see Eric Jones out of his car. The grill. Check the grill. Roll, roll. Yeah, that car almost rolled over in Eric Jones is number 77. Let's take another look at this caution. And now the red is being displayed as the cars are stopped in turn two. And you see they're coming off turn two and Eric Jones Car gets loose, puts a little bit too much wheel back to the right and basically head on into the wall and then major impact behind, got him up in the air. 
I think that was Daniel Suarez, perhaps, that made the first impact. It looked like the 19 car, that orange and white car. But as we mentioned, the 20 involved, the one of Jamie McMurray, both involved in the playoffs, part of the round of 12. It says the big hit right there for the 20 car. You see Jimmy Johnson, the left hand side of the screen, sliding through. Man, it's very good to see Eric Jones get out. That was a big, when those turn back to the right, look at this at real speed. Look how big this impact is right here. And that's so easy to do, Rick. Right along with Matt Kenseth. Right, looking at middle lane. He's still out there. You see three. Easy, easy, easy. Stay low, stay low, stay low, stay low. Everyone scattering as we ride along with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Great job by Jr. Check out this shot from the helmet cam. Get low, get low, get low. Stay where you are in the winter. Check up, check up, check up, check up. Keep coming. Big high. There you go. Good cut. You That's heard just him, close, you yes. heard when that hole opened up, you heard him go back to the throttle. See right here, the wheel, just a little too much wheel back to the right. Daniel Suarez absolutely nowhere to go. 14 of Clint Boyer, heavy damage with the 19 as well. And we saw the 43 of Eric Almarola was also involved. Unbelievable wreck on lap 199 the hollywood casino 400 77 of eric jones almost up and over A huge penalty for the 20 team of Matt Kenseth. We had mentioned when they were on pit road and they were working on the car, you can't have more than six members of the pit crew over the wall. We actually counted it. We saw there were seven. NASCAR has also looked at it. They said that's too many men over the wall. And the problem with too many men over the wall is during the course of the race, if it happens on a normal pit stop, you just go to the tail end. But when you are on the five minute clock, when you are part of the damage vehicle policy, which the 20 of Matt Kenseth was absolutely on, he was in the accident, that these seven men right here, that is basically you are done in the event. You have failed the damage vehicle policy. The 20, no matter the amount of damage, cannot continue. They will go to the garage. They can no longer participate in this race and this damage vehicle policy it was developed in the off season you heard Kansas that's exactly what it means so what you're telling me we sent one too many guys all for you and not have a chance to race for a championship because of that is that what you're telling me nope I'm telling you 
I said six over and somebody can't count. That's what I'm telling you. And you can understand the frustration from Matt Kenseth. Here he is having a shot to go to the next round, and he's just been told because they didn't abide by a rule, he's not going to have a chance to win the championship. But this rules, they were developed in the offseason with the teams and NASCAR together in an effort to make it fair, to make it more affordable. That's where all this has come from. Guys, this is bigger than just this moment right here on the track. Matt Kenseth doesn't have a ride in 2018. He was looking for the possibility of potentially ending his career with a championship. He now has just been told that because one person jumped over the wall, he can't continue racing and he will not be able to race for a championship this year. And that rule, the seven men, you know, the, the too many men rule was put in place because you're limited to how much time you're allowed to repair a damaged vehicle. If they, if the penalty was one lap or tail end, these crew chiefs would send 10, 15, 20 guys over the wall because the penalty would be weaker than ex the clock expiring. So NASCAR had to put some teeth to that penalty. And unfortunately for the 20, that mistake, you heard the crew chief. I sent six over, somebody couldn't count. That's the frustration talking. The simple part is, we showed you the replay. Seven guys were without a doubt servicing the car. You, now you see car owner Joe Gibbs. These are the nuances. They're very detailed rules. I don't expect Matt Kenseth to know it or Coach Gibbs, but I do expect crew chiefs to know it, and he knew it. He wasn't happy about it because Jason Ratcliffe knew that, hey, we had seven. That's the rule. And, and we heard, the, and we all heard the about the radio. Members, say all the crew members six have to guys. Know it too. Uh, all the crew members have to know it, too. That That is the thing. Like, the crew members need to help out. That's right. The crew members need to be there, and they need to check themselves and say, oh, look, oh, look the rule is six. We saw it yesterday in the Xfinity race. They, the, crew, the crew members did not know the rule when a team got penalized. We're seeing it again today. Everyone throughout the entire team needs to know these rules. And you heard the dejection in Matt Kenseth's voice. I mean, can you imagine the disappointment? I mean, you are a champion. You mentioned it. Possibly the last career, last year of your career, you have an opportunity to win a championship, and someone just said, hey, because an extra guy went over the wall, that dream is over. I mean, that is heartbreaking. Matt's going to climb out of the car. And again, the rules are in place for a reason. But when you violate the rules, they have to be enforced. There's Coach Joe Gibbs, obviously frustrated by what just took place. And now, once again, we'll have to continue to look at these points. On the left side of the screen, the 42 of Kyle Larson. Now, the 20 is being shown below already. Yeah, because the 20 is basically the 27th position. The 42 is in the garage with a blown engine. So basically, he's waiting to see what kind of race the 48 can come up with. Remember, he was two of the last three yellows, and he almost was in this accident as well. That 48 was so close to joining in on this accident. The other thing is the 48 still has not got up to minimum speed yet because they haven't completed a lap. Yeah, so they probably won't be coming down pit road. If they do, it's going to be in short order. But look at this, right in the middle of the mess, cars sliding everywhere. The one slides in front of him. He turns hard right to miss Jamie McMurray. Sometimes it's not the best days that get you to advance. It's just kind of trying to make the most of the bad days. That's what Jimmy Johnson and the 48 are trying to do right here. And think what Kyle Larson is thinking right now. And all this is going on. We just got the report that he's still here. And, you know, he's you never want bad things to happen to your competition. You just want to go out and beat them. But we talked about the opportunity that Kyle Larson has to win a championship. One more guy has a problem. One more the right guy, and he could still be back in it. And you see already out of the car and talking to members of the media, Matt Kenseth, the end of his Kansas race, and more than likely the end of his opportunity to continue on in the playoffs. You know, the disappointing part about that is you could go back and look and think about what are all the things he could have done different, right? 
and, and the pitch strategies, the man over the wall, all those things you can go back and rethink and say, well, we would have done this or we would have done that. But the fact of the matter is their day is over. Back to yellow, by the way, the caution is now being displayed. But take another look at the 20 on pit road. Yeah, so it's as simple as this. Some of the pit crew goes over to change the tires. You would have a mix of pit crew and mechanics. You see this indecision right here by, I'm assuming it's a mechanic, says he has a sawzall, not an air gun. So he didn't know if he should go over. Then he went back to pit wall. Then he went over. They ended up being too many guys. Dave? So we're going to check with Matt now, who's had a chance to brief with everyone else down here. Matt? Describe what you believe the rule to be now that it's been talked to for you in the situation with you and the 20 being parked now. I don't know what any of the rules are. It seems like we've got a lot of stuff that kind of gets, uh, you know, changed so often. I honestly can't keep up with it. My head kind of spins from, you know, putting lug nuts on out of pit boxes to one too many guys over the wall. You're not allowed to race anymore. I mean, I just don't get it, to be honest with you. But um, I really don't have a lot good to say right now. Um, I'm more than disappointed, but I'm just going to um, say thanks to DeWalt. They've been a sponsor of mine off and on for 20 years. Um, awesome guys there. They deserve better than this. Uh, we showed some flashes of brilliance this season, been off and on, been fast at times, had great pit stops at times. Just um, just haven't been able to put it all together like a championship team needs to. And um, unfortunately, this is, this is an example of that. You know, So I I'm hoping I can do a better job here in the next four weeks and uh, hopefully go get a win. Matt, can you take us through that restart and what was happening coming off of turn two? I, I didn't see the wreck. I was racing real hard on the bottom. That Dale Jr. outside of me and uh, racing the guy in front of me. I never saw the wreck until uh, basically it was too late. So uh, by the time I noticed everybody checking up, um, you know, I started checking up and got. And I think I got ran over and just spun out and it just stuck in it. So I just didn't. I didn't see it in time. My angle went on the bottom, um, and the guys I was racing, I couldn't see what was going on up there. Matt Kent's second championship hopes ruined this afternoon, guys. And ultimately. The, the time that they were working on the car, that was before that restart. So they were going to be notified, even if that caution didn't come out, they were going to be notified that they would have had to have been eliminated from the race. Because that they worked on that car, the seven men came over when they were working on it, they were back out there for the restart when that last caution came out. Yeah, they were, it was just in the last caution. So the caution is back out. We're getting ready for the restart here at Kansas.
You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Kansas. This telecast presented by Outback Steakhouse. And once again, a beautiful shot from up above Kansas Speedway. Our aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. So after that wreck had taken place, Matt Kenseth, they had come to pit road. Before the caution came out, they were working on it, which you can do. And then when the, the red flag came out, he stopped on pit road. But it was prior to the red flag coming out, the work that they had done on that car that they had sent the seventh man over the wall. And that is why he is no longer involved in this race. Marty was able to catch up with Jimmy McMurray. Well, it's the end of the championship road for Jamie McMurray as well. And I know that's not fun when he had a top five car like you had all afternoon long. What was your view of the wreck? Uh, it just looked like the 77 got loose. Um, I saw him, it looked like he overcorrected. And then actually, I didn't think I was going to hit him. Um, and I didn't have that much contact with him. And, but someone came through later on and, and, uh, and, and got into me a little bit harder. Had a, had a really fast car. I told you, you know, in the, in the pre-race that uh, I thought we had one of the best cars. And <clears throat> I felt like if we could have... Ever got to the lead, you could have led the race for a while. So um, good Cessna Chevy. Just unfortunately, we've had two bad races in a row and nothing you can do about it. Even more frustrating, Jamie, because of the good car that you had today. Well, I was really looking forward to just getting to the end of the race. Um, and like I said earlier, we just needed a pit stops to go our way or the strategy to get shook up. And it was kind of happening right there. Um, you just hope that you're going to be on the right end of the strategy. Um, and then if the race would have went went long, I thought we had one of the best cars on the long run. But, but you just don't know. Um, you know, you race all day to, to the end, and we didn't make it today. Ran top five all day long, but the championship hopes are over for Jay McMurray. Such a frustrating day for... These drivers, as we take a look at the Lamb Ram Guts and Glory. Well, here we have eight playoff drivers that have issues already today. And can the 42 still make it with all these issues? The 42 has stayed alive, even though he had that mechanical issue early in the race. Yeah, don't let this delay of the red flag or all these yellows change the point. A lot of these tires or a lot of these cars have a limited amount of new tires in the pits. If we continue to see yellows, who has enough tires and who will put them on at the right point of time to make a run for the checker? Ryan Blaney. Right now, as they run, 21 points above the cut line. And Jimmy Johnson, 13 points above that cut line as well. The one below is the 42 of Kyle Larson. We already know he is parked in the garage. It's now all dependent upon how the 48 of Jimmy Johnson runs. They're going to add another lap of caution. And again, I, I had mentioned that the the 20 of Matt Kenseth had worked on the car before the caution. It was before the red flag is what I was trying to say. The, he, they had worked on it prior to that red flag coming out. They were stopped on pit road, so they were going to be told uh, that they were out of the race, even if he was able to continue on around the track. So difficult situation for the 20 team, as well as the 77 of Eric Jones involved in that last incident. Let's hear from him. He's with Marty. Well, hard hit for Eric Jones, and man, you just got into the top three with obviously a very quick race car. What happened, and are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I just lost it. Um, it's unfortunate. I, I feel bad for my guys and my team, but I also feel bad for the cars that, uh, that we took out of the race. So, you know, it's just a shame. Um, I made the same mistakes here in the spring. Um, you know, this place has, has just been tough to me here in the cup cars. So, uh, fortunately, we had a fast car in the 5 Hour Energy Camry was up front. And we had worked our way back up to that point after having, um, you know, a couple of mishaps at the start of the day. But uh, nonetheless, not the ending we wanted. But uh, hopefully we can come back a little bit stronger for Martinsville. Well, guys, I think Kansas proved it in the spring for everyone. And here today as well, this is a tough racetrack. Absolutely. Listen in to Jimmy Johnson's radio. Fresh tires. Those cats up ahead of you have older tires. So that got us in a good spot there. Those other guys, I think, are 170 range. Currently, it looks like we have to finish 19th or better. 19th or better. They're already looking at the numbers. And right now, Jimmy Johnson running in the seventh position. And just for reference, there's 22 cars in the lead lap right now. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick once again on the front row. And Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney. Martin Truex Jr. also in the top five. Big run on the outside line. And once again, we see the 78 moving toward the front. Chase Elliott, Kevin Harvick fighting for the third spot. 
Kyle Busch at the start of this race was below the cut line. A big topic of discussion. Could the 18 team of Kyle Busch be eliminated from the playoff contention? Well, he's brought it into his own hands now with under 62 laps to go. Kyle Busch out front trying to get a win. Five playoff points would be huge to add to the one playoff point that he earned when he won stage one. But you can never count out the 78 team. Martin Shrex Jr. has been the best on mile and a half tracks. He's been the best today. And just as I mentioned it, here comes Martin Shrex Jr. He looked at the inside of the 18. Can he complete the pass? He drove underneath the 18, but just couldn't make the pass dig. Now the 18 is going to get a big run, has that momentum on the top lane. Martin Shrex Jr. is not going to quit. He's going to keep digging on the bottom. It's so hard to make this work. We've seen the groove move higher and higher on the racetrack. Kyle Busch making that work for him. Couldn't complete the pass, could not take the lead away from the 18. Now Martin Trex Jr. will regroup and try to find another way around. Nose to tail, how do you set up a driver to try to get by at this racetrack? Well, I was thinking from, from Kyle Busch's point of view, what does he want to do? He learned right there that the 78 isn't going to easily be able to pass him on the inside. So if I'm Kyle Busch, I'm going to take the middle of the racetrack. You saw right there, he went to the bottom, and I think that surprised Martin Truex Jr. a little, a little bit. And because of that, Truex went to the middle in three and four. And I think that's one thing that's very important, is if you're Kyle Busch, keep surprising Martin Truex Jr. Because we know when you're behind another car, the aerodynamics really make your car not drive well, so maybe don't let Martin Truex know where you're going to go. Kyle Busch, one of the most talented racers on the track, but he also has to be thinking about how good Martin Truex Jr. is on mile-and-a-half tracks. And you see right now the average finish for Martin Truex Jr. this year has been a third-place finish. And right now he is running second, potentially, if he could go on to win this race, could bring it back down and challenge Bobby Labonte for that record. And to the front he goes. Martin Truex Jr. takes the lead away from Kyle Busch. Great recovery by the 78 car. 78, Remember they, three. Come on. they had that restart penalty at lap 36, and they had a loose wheel on lap 91. It's been an eventful day for the 78, Kelly, but they have recovered well. Lap 210 taking the lead. Yeah, how about that? Well, right after that wreck ha happened, Martin Truex Jr. came over the radio and said, that had to be big. I barely made it by. And then during the red flag, he said to Cole Pern, this has been a crazy day, man. We're going to win this thing. And Cole said, you're darn right. Well, he's leading again now, Marty. 56 to go. Kyle Busch has put himself in the position to be able to advance to the round of eight. Right now, as you saw, just got passed by Martin Truex Jr. Kelly. And the right now, he's dealing with a car that's been too free all afternoon long. But it's important to have situational awareness, isn't it, Jeff, when you're behind the wheel? They came on the radio. Tony Hirschman, the spotter for Kyle Busch, said, hey, remember that 78 has fresher tires than you. Don't panic here. Just take what it gives you. And you saw him kind of not give up the lead there, but certainly not push it too hard with his corporate teammate either. Now that's a great point, Marty. Martin Truex Jr. pitted on lap 189 and Kyle Busch on lap 157. So just keep that in mind. Don't panic. Pay attention to what your car is doing. Keep relaying that information so your team can make the right decisions. This race is not over. Understand the situation you're in. Let's get a few updates, and we'll start with Parker. Well, guys, the guy behind Kyle Busch is Chase Elliott in the 24, who just got to third place by passing Kevin Harvick. And before this restart, he was told he had 10 lap newer tires in the 4 and the 18. So he's used it as a good effect to get by the 4 and trying to chase down the 18. Behind him is the 4 of Kevin Harvick, who was told before that restart, obviously, that he did not have as new tires as the guys around him. And he actually has 20 lap worse tires in the car behind him, which is Ryan Blaney, who's now getting a great run off of turn 4 and going below him down the front stretch using those 20 lap newer tires to get by there and fighting a bit of a tight condition in that 21 car. Let's see who's on the move. Brought to you by John Deere. And you're looking at him. The 21 of Ryan Blaney started 40th, running fourth, has made up 36 spots during this race. 
what a solid day for this Wood Brothers team. And Ryan Blaney, young race car driver, but not acting like it today. Very poised and a very difficult opportunity to have a bad day because of where he started, but has just done a great job. Matt DiBenedetto as well made up 16 spots already, running 14th after starting 30th. Rick, it's just so easy to forget that Ryan Blaney, this is only his 86th cup race, only his second year in the series, first year in the playoffs. You know, I was concerned how he would approach the start of this day, starting 40th. He took away every one of my concerns very early in this race, being very methodical in traffic. And then his crew chief, Jeremy Bullens, jumped on top of that with a very nice strategy to get him some track position. This 21 team should be very proud so far of this effort with 51 to go. You talk about his day, let's look at it. Moving up for Ryan Blaney. You mentioned he started 40th after his time was disallowed in qualifying. So he had a lot of ground to make up. And early, he was able to do just that. Then the competition caution on lap 30. Yeah, never really put himself in a bad situation. Very smooth driving up through the pack. Yeah, and then the opportunity came out. What do you do? Do you pit? Do you stay out? Jeremy Bowens makes a decision, leaves his driver on the racetrack, gaining that so important track position. They were able to break into the top 10, got a few of the stage points, and now Ryan Blaney running up in the top five as we go NASCAR nonstop from Kansas Speedway. Welcome back to Kansas Speedway. You can see Kevin Harvick pitting there and taking four Goodyear tires. He was complaining of being really tight and was falling back, actually fell outside of the top five there and really wanted to get new tires on that four car. And a big strategy move for Kevin Harvick, knowing they weren't able to gain on the three in front of them. Gamble, you got to switch something up to see if you can get the win. Well, as Parker said, he was losing so much ground on the racetrack, and, you know, they did pit. Now they can make it to the end of the race from here, Kelly. Yeah, that's the case for the 11 of Denny Hamlin and the 2 of Brad Keselowski behind them. They both came to pit road once the red flag went back to yellow flag conditions after that big wreck just moments ago. Mike Wheeler, crew chief on the 11, asked Denny, said, can you save me four laps? Denny said, absolutely. So his crew chief told him, hey, start saving now. I want to listen in on spotter communication from the two of Brad Keselowski. It's going to have off the 18 on the entry in three, but the minute they get over the tunnel, the thing is just motoring forward. That 78. There's not on the bottom of the 18 and the four. They're at 30%. Everybody else is bottom bottom. 
That was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance helping drivers worry less. Kozlowski currently running eighth. Denny Hamlin is seventh. Marty. And Rick with Kevin Harvick pitting that leaves one car on the racetrack that pitted last at lap 157 and that's Kyle Busch and right now Adam Stevens is thinking he's going to stay out at least nine if not 15 more laps for that 18 car. So Steve talk about that strategy obviously when the four pitted he went down a lap so far Kyle Busch has been the dominant guy today but they'll have to come to pit road pretty soon here. Well they have to come to pit road and I really think as I start looking at the top ten and the variety of last pit laps these drivers have been on pit road some at 189, some at or Kyle Busch at 157, other drivers at 199 or 200. So you look at that last pit lap graphic, what jumps out at me? The fifth place car, Kurt Busch. Lap 199, that's 68 laps to the finish, but Rick, he has had a tremendous amount of yellow flag laps. So if he was saving during those yellows, he had five yellows. If he was saving hard during those yellows, he might be able to stretch it. If these last 40 laps run green, the 41 of Kurt Busch could perhaps be in the driver's seat. Kyle Busch again came to pit road at lap 157, currently running second. He's four and a half seconds behind Martin Truex Jr. But more on his brother, Kurt Busch. Dave. Rick standing below Tony Gibson. I just mouthed those words, can you make it? And he took a deep breath, blew it back out, and said, it's going to be close. So Kurt Busch running fifth, trying to stretch it potentially. Right behind him is Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was last on pit road at lap 189. So that stretch would be way too far. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they can make it. I don't know what kind of fuel mileage they're getting for the season that the 88 is having. I perhaps would run out of gas on the racetrack and try to risk it if I was within two or three. But I don't think they can even get the math to within two or three. But it's still a good run. He's inside the top six. I think really what the 88 needs now is just a caution. Come down, get some four tires and try to race from there. Yeah, right behind him is Denny Hamlin, and he's built, he pitted on one lap 199 along with Kurt Busch. And the question I have about him is, can he afford to gamble? Can he afford to run out of gas in the point position that he's in? Will it be safer for him just to come down pit road and get fuel versus running out of gas? You couldn't run out of gas coming off turn four. You don't make it all the way back around. You could be in trouble. Well, we talk about cars that are trying to work this fuel strategy. How about the ninth place runner, Eric Almarola, in this 43? He's announced he won't be back at Richard Petty Motorsports next year. You see the damage on the car. The hood's all taped up. He also was on pit road at lap 200, so he should be able to make it on fuel. And passing him currently, the 37 of Chris Buescher. JTG Racing doing a nice job. He was on pit road to the point where I think he can make it on fuel as well. Dave? And Steve, I don't know the answer to that, but on the 37 in terms of speed, Trent Owens, the crew chief, told me earlier today that they were very happy with what they've seen out of the best speed on a mile and a half all year. And if you look back to the numbers, he was seventh quick in one lap times in yesterday's second practice. Marty? They talked to the 43 team. They think they can make it all the way, so that will be very interesting. And remember what happened in the spring here at Kansas to Eric Almarola. A huge accident broke his back. He sat out most of the year. It would be so fitting if he could come back here and win it here in the fall. Rick, we talk about all these strategies. The one car that does not want this to go green is the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Currently 11th. We know what he's trying to do for the points. I don't believe he can make it on fuel, and he's probably one of the last cars that can't make it. If this runs green, this is going to cost the 48 a lot of points. It's going to have to see if it's too many to make the playoffs or not. Marty? Cannot have a mistake here on the pit stop for Kyle Busch. He told Adam Stevens a moment ago, he said, I don't like what I got here. I'm starting to feel tight. And obviously, if you're a driver, you're a little concerned about a tire might be going. So four fresh Goodyear tires. They made an air pressure adjustment. He said it was just a little bit tight in the center. First time all day long. Car has not been loose for the 18. We'll see where he cycles out now after this green flag stop. You got a headache yet, Rick? The and math. We're trying to do the math. But listen, li that's I've not lived your it. strong point, is it? <laughs> I've lived it. That's I've lived it Steve. for 10 years. I'm, I'm not trying to be silly with this, but you want to know what it's like to sit on a pit box? Here you go. You have to figure out your car, how it handles, what kind of chassis adjustment you need to make, what your fuel mileage is, what your opponent's fuel mileage is. There are so many moving parts to this chess game. In simplest terms right now, well, let's go to Kelly first. Kelly? Well, just a point on Martin Truex Jr. He came to pit road 10 laps before those cars that were in on 199. They were in on 189. 
Martin asked his crew chief, Cole Pern, if they are needed to save. He said, no, man, we're not anywhere close to making this on fuel. Push as hard as you can now. They're going to have to make a, a pit stop, and they're hoping for a caution to do so. Right now, the top three. Martin Shrek's Jr. Caution. caution comes out. The 47 goes around. A.J. Allmendinger. And so this will put everybody to rest as far as if a caution comes out or not. Rick, there are a lot of storylines, but I think there cannot be two happier people in all of Kansas than Jack Knauss and Jimmy Johnson. I'm sure they knew where they're at on strategy. They did the best they could. They've spun a couple times, but sometimes you're put into a corner. They were in that corner. This caution saves the 48. Now, there's still no such thing as a guarantee, but now, Jeff, they could come in, put some tires on this car, and race their way and try to advance. So the 48s will be able to come back to pit road as will numerous teams that will be coming that would have been right outside of their pit or their fuel window. You see right here he comes in a in the frame the car gets very loose you can see all the damage on the car car obviously wasn't driving very well just got away from him but well, these cars are hard to drive anyway but once they get damaged you get all that body damage and suspension damage they become that much more difficult. So again, A.J. Allmendinger brings out now the 10th caution of the day. Martin Shrugs Jr. was going to be short as far as fuel to be able to get to the end. He had come to pit road at lap 189. Chase Elliott was in the same boat. He was on pit road at 176. Blaney at 189 as well. Yeah, and Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch, we saw both of those cars off to pin under green, trying to work that strategy, get some fresh tires. Both of those cars are currently one lap down. They may have the opportunity to get a wave by. We have to see who pits and who doesn't, but they're currently 21st and 22nd. Kyle Busch, that gets to be a little hairy. He's only one point to the good over Kyle Larson, but with a fast race car, I would expect him to be able to gain some points as this race continues. And now the differing strategies, but Steve, as you mentioned, it's dependent upon if someone thinks about staying out here, trying to stay in front of this group. Yeah, I mean, with 30, 30, 35 laps on your tires, depending on which car you are, I think staying out here would be very, very difficult. We saw how much speed the 48 didn't have earlier. He had about that many laps on his tires, and in one lap, he was back to 10th position. So I think everyone on the lead lap will have to come to pit road. Martin Trex Jr. obviously feels good about his strategy up there, leading the race, riding along board with Denny Hamlin. He's in sixth, the 21 of Ryan Blaney in third. I think all these guys feel pretty good about their situation, Jeff. Look, I want to revisit something that happened early in the race. We saw the 20 car get penalized, too many men over the wall while under the damaged vehicle policy. That is the end of your day. On social media, I've heard a lot of people talking about the 48, and he had seven men over the wall. Well, let's examine it, and let's explain the rule so everybody knows what the rule is. So clearly, Jimmy Johnson comes in. He's under the damaged vehicle policy. See the hoods damaged? Here they are. See this man come over the wall. This is the seventh man. Watch what he does. He pulls a tear-off off, goes back over the wall. He is servicing the driver. NASCAR allows the seventh man to service the driver and only service the driver. That's all he did, and that's why there was not a penalty on the 48. That's great detail there, Jeff, because you're right. That Anyone who services the driver, that one crew member, he's a freebie. He doesn't count, so that was great to point that out. Listen into the 48 radio. All right, so we're sitting 10th right now. After we've gone through and looked at this a little bit closer, Jimmy, it looks like we got to be 14th or better. We'll out. We'll find out. So now they're looking at it as 14th or better. And right now they're racing as far as a car that isn't even in the race. The, the 42 is what they're trying to make sure they stay in front of to keep the 42 out of the round of eight. Pit Road's currently closed. That 47 spun in the grass. They've kind of pulled them out onto Pit Road. they got to get the 47 clear before they can open Pit Road. And you think 14th or better, that's not hard, <laughs> right? I mean, Jimmy Johnson, seven-time champion, he can finish 14th or better. Well, we just saw the wreck on the restart. We see how things happen. It's... It's yes, if everything goes fine, finishing 14th is not that difficult, but this is racing. You never know what's going to happen. And 
Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss, they've been around long enough to know that this is not a done deal. Jeff, how many yep. times you have to do it? You have to run somewhere inside the top 20, say it's 16th, 18th. Yeah. Where do you run all night? 18th, 19th, yeah, 18th right, yeah. right there on the edge. Sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, that's right. I was just going to say, and this is a wounded race car, as you've noted, and it's gotten out from underneath Jimmy in a loose way. So when they talked about what to do to the race car, whether Jimmy would like any adjustments, they tended to go a little bit toward freeing it up. Now, remember that Jimmy still has inside the cockpit the ability to work that track bar and adjust it back down if it gets too free. So there'll be a lot going on for him after he pits. You have Kyle Larson, Rick. He's in his motorhome or in the trailer or somewhere watching this race, knowing that basically the 18 and the 48, they're going to have to have issues for him to get through. And you never want to wish bad luck on someone, but at some point, I'm sure he's hoping things come his way. It's been chaotic, but with 29 to go, he still needs a little bit more help. Now it looks like pit road is open. Pit road is open, and we see the 78 leading the lead lap cars down pit road. Dave. And here comes Jimmy. He'll get four fresh tires for sure. The team getting ready to put those on. They are sticker tires, so they had those remaining, and the adjustment to free the car up will be in the form of a chassis adjustment, Parker. See the 24 of Chase Elliott is going to pit out in second place there. You're going to do four Goodyear tires and just a little bit of fuel and add tape in that 24 car as well as loosen it up a little bit as well. Below him to 21 of Ryan Blaney. Going to do four Goodyear tires and loosen up a lot on that 21 car for the short run and just a little bit of fuel. This should be the fastest stops of the day. And here they come off of pit road. We take a look at the race off of pit road. Hamlin gains a couple spots. Kurt Busch as well. Blaney loses a spot on pit road as we go NASCAR nonstop. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less on the track and on the road. 
Coming up after the checkered flag, continued post-race coverage live from here in Kansas. And after the post-race, it's victory lap on NBCSN, where you can join the conversation on Twitter or Instagram. That's hashtag victory lap. Again, send your questions and thoughts to the hashtag victory lap, and the show will showcase the fans' social take. Again, that'll be 90 minutes of coverage after the race. Marty. Rick, the dominant car of the day, Kyle Busch, will restart 22nd after taking the wave around a moment ago. He wanted to know where the point situation stood. Here's the conversation on the radio. 10-4, we're racing the 42 that's in the garage, so uh, there's nothing coming from behind. We just can't finish worse to uh, give him a point, you know what I'm saying? And Adam Stevens told him on the radio, I need you to keep one thing in mind for me on this restart. Manage your risk. Kyle Busch right now, as you see, plus one above that cut line, Rick. Yeah, he took the wave around. The two of Brad Keselowski was caught for speeding again on pit road. They had to serve that penalty. The 78 and 41 up front. 41 spins his tires on the restart. The 11. Right on the back bumper of the 18. Denny Hamlin trying to hang on to second. Here comes the 41 of Kurt Busch. Brothers up front in Kansas. Keep in mind that 18 car is, the la is not the last car to lead lap. Keselowski is, and Keselowski has newer tires than Kyle Busch. He's only one spot behind him. Mark Shrex Jr. out front. Kurt Busch running second. Hamlin, Blaney, Elliott. As I mentioned Kyle Busch now on the lead lap, running 21st, and now as the points cycle through that 21st position now 20th position for Kyle Busch has him three points above the cut line Ryan Blaney chasing after the 11 of Denny Hamlin under 24 laps to go now as Blaney ducks to the inside trying to get by the 11. And Blaney is going to complete the pass on Denny Hamlin. So Blaney up to third. What a race it has been for Ryan Blaney coming from 40th now up to third. Martin Trex Jr. trying to add another win on a mile and a half track as he runs up front. Kevin Harvick moving to the inside of Joey Logano for position. Racing against the 18 of Kyle Busch. And you heard Marty's report, manage your risk. Kyle Busch is glad that restart went smooth. Now the cars are basically single file in front of him. He's had a good race car. He should be able to pass a couple cars up here in front of the four and give himself a few points to the good just to make sure there's a cushion for these last 22 laps. Fuel not an issue for anyone. Martin Shrex Jr., Kurt Busch, Ryan Blaney, Hamlin, and Chase Elliott, the top five. Racing for a win for Truex Jr., Blaney, Hamlin, and Elliott. It could be five more playoff points if they were to win, as those are the four drivers currently in the top five that are in the playoffs, looking to advance into the round of eight. The ultimate goal to make the championship four. Rick, as we talk about this playoff battle, we have Martin Truex leading. We talk about the 18 trying to make it in and Jimmy Johnson. How about some other non-playoff cards? 37 of Chris Buescher currently in the sixth position. A great run so far for him. Dale Jr. is in eighth. Eric Amarola ninth. David Reagan tenth. Michael McDowell eleventh. Paul Menard on baby watch. He's in twelfth. That's right. His wife Jennifer expecting a baby any time now. Marty. Rick, obviously, uh, smiles in the 18 camp as of right now. You see plus six for Kyle Busch. But just think about this. Right now, we've talked all day long about them trying just to make it into the round of eight. If he does that later this afternoon in 19 laps, he'll immediately be the second seed in the round of eight because of all the playoff points he's gathered. And he added one more to that by winning stage one today. That's this new stage system, those playoff points so valuable. And if Kyle Busch makes it through today, he'll be the second seed in round two. Pretty amazing to think. I think what we're seeing right now from Kyle Busch is just just being smart. He knows he's not going to win the race this far back, and he just needs to finish this race off and see this battle for eighth. 
48 getting passed by the 88. But the 48, 13 points above the cut line. And Rick, I think we're going to have to go back at the end of this day. I'm going to have to go back and look at all the replays. To think about this 48, he was back-to-back -back yellows. Both in turns three and four, spun out, came to pit road, had to manage the clock, had to manage the crew members over pit wall. We talked about the potential for mistakes. They avoided those. And right now, while it's not a flashy finish, currently running in the ninth, it may be enough to continue on to the round of eight. As we've been focusing on these, these battles back in the field, Kurt Busch has not let Martin Truex Jr. get away from him. He's actually been a little bit quicker the last several laps. That lap right there, Martin Truex was about a tenth faster than Kurt Busch, but the laps prior to that, Kurt was running him down. Dave. Checking with Kirchy Tony Gibson this morning, he told me we weren't as fast as our teammate Kevin Harvey, but we feel really good about our race speed. Pretty happy with the consistency at a more than 20 lap run. Now, this run may not have gone on that long yet, but the tires are certainly that old, and the 41's hanging in there. Absolutely hanging in there. He's six tenths of a second behind as we see the speeds at the line. Fastest that time around was Chase Elliott, currently in fifth. Denny Hamlin at the second fastest lap, and then it was Martin Truex Jr. And you're Jimmy Johnson. Well, if you're the 78 leading the race, Jimmy Johnson in ninth, or Kyle Busch all the way back in 14th. I think they're just hoping for 15 more green flag laps at this point. This has been eventful enough. While, you know, the 78 obviously wants to win, the other two, Johnson and Kyle Busch, they just want to move out of this race. And, and remember, coming into this race, the 42 of Kyle Larson looked to be comfortable, looked to be in great shape, 33 points above the cut line. They had an engine problem. That put him in the garage early. Then it looked as though he would be out. But with all the cautions that have taken place and the different people involved in them, he had enough of a cushion over that cut line that it's made it interesting. Right now, he's only 10 points back, but he's not even on the racetrack. They've been in the garage for quite a few laps now. The 18, 10 positions in front of that cutoff line and looking to advance into the round of eight. Chase Elliott passing Denny Hamlin. I mean, Jeff, I don't think we can say enough about this 24 car. The playoffs has come, and he's just come to life, continuing to run inside the top five. Other than that wreck last week in Talladega, the 24 and his finishes in the playoffs, he has a second at Chicago, a second at Dover, 11th at New Hampshire. I mean, he continues to run a second at Charlotte, continues to run up inside the top five, if not the top three. Yeah, what I like about what they've done also is a number of opportunities they've truly had to win races. I mean, you can claw finishes out, but to be honest with you, they have been in position. They win a lot. They haven't figured out how to get it done yet, but it's coming. And, you know, they've had a problem for free, free playoff for the most part, but they've had speed on top of that. Saw the 17 on the bottom of the racetrack involved in one of the accidents earlier. Not up to speed. And so the 17, his playoff hopes will be ending after this round. And how about the 11 car? You know, going into the next round, if everything this thing ends just like it's going right now, the 11 car going to Martinsville. I think about Denny Hamlin being one of the very best at Martinsville. I think about Phoenix. I think Denny Hamlin's one of the best at Phoenix as well. So, and Texas, for that matter, Denny Hamlin's a winner at Texas. So these next three races lay out very well for Denny Hamlin. Martin Truex Jr. still up front. Martin Truex Jr. has led 85 laps today, but it hasn't been easy. He's had an interesting day. Lap 36, when he had the restart penalty, remember, he wasn't able to go below the white line before the start finish line, which he did right there. That was announced to them in the driver crew chief meeting before the race. He changed lanes and went below the yellow line on the restart. Came down pit road, served his penalty, did not get a lap down, but then he had a loose wheel later and he had to pit under green. And they pitted for that loose wheel, as you mentioned, and then right here, this is perhaps the big turning point. He's somehow right in behind this wreck when it started, but he got to the bottom of the racetrack, avoided the big wreck. Martin Shrex Jr. with a 1.1 second lead, under 10 laps to go, less than nine, actually down to eight even for Martin Shrex Jr. This would be considered a home race for Bass Pro Shop, which is based in Springfield, Missouri. Johnny Morris was actually on the Today Show this morning with 
Willie Geist. They were talking about Bass Pro Shop and how it started. And now a great day for the 78 team and Bass Pro Shops on the hood of this car. Yeah, started on the front row today, had a chance to win this race. Looks like he's going to try to capitalize with only seven laps to go. Remember that pole position also gives him the number one pit pick next week at Martinsville, the first race of the round of eight. So that between that and the playoff points, this 78 looks like he is a contender for Miami. And then you have to just ask yourself, with Kyle Larson looking like he's not going to advance, probably one of the better drivers at Miami running around the top of the racetrack. That also bodes well for the 78. Things just continue to seem to fall in order to make the 78 your favorite for the championship here in four weeks. With a mile and a half being their best racetrack, I'm not so sure that this next round lays out very well for them. But with that point advantage that they've earned throughout the year, solid days will move them forward. But it's not easy to have a solid day at Martinsville. We see how crazy it gets. Side-by-side -side battles the entire race. You never have a break in Martinsville. I think that's the race that this team would be worried about the most. Martinsville, Texas, and Phoenix will be the third round of the playoffs. That round of eight where only four drivers advance to the championship in Homestead, Miami. Kelly. And Rick Colpern, crew chief on the 78, told me that Martinsville was like their wild card for the next round, but he feels like their short track pro program has gotten much better. He said, look, if we can get out of Martinsville with either, either a win or a decent finish, they feel really confident about Texas and Phoenix to get into Miami. But he said, Miami is our biggest issue. It has not been our best track. We need to get there first, but then our focus will be getting better there. And as I mentioned earlier, they will be testing at Miami uh, two days coming up this next week. So that's really the focus of the 78 team. 78 team looking for another mile and a half win. They have been dominant on mile and a half racetracks. And now just three laps to go for Martin Shrex Jr. and the whole Furniture Row racing team. I'm sure appreciating this run that Martin Shrex Jr. has put together. Think about this, Rick. If this ends right now, this team will have an average finish on mile and a half of 2.8. Think about that, 2.8. 2.8, and only one driver in the history of NASCAR has ever had a better finish, average finish, on mile-and-a-half tracks. It's Bobby Labonte at 2.4. Now, Martin Trex Jr. could dive down there and get that even better because there are two mile-and-a-half tracks left, the Texas track as well as Homestead, Miami. So he could get that average finish on mile-and-a-half tracks even lower than 2.8, which could be happening if he finishes up here in this number one spot. And again, we have to remember from Furniture Row Racing, passing away yesterday, Jim Watson. There's one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. One more time around the mile and a half. A fabricator for the Furniture Row team. Jim Watson lost his life yesterday. And so now, with heavy hearts, they race, but Martin Trex Jr trying to put another win in the column for the organization and the family. Coming through three and four for the final time. He's going to do it again. Martin Truex Jr. wins. For you, Jim. Love you, bud. This is for the organization, knowing what they've all experienced over the last 24 hours, losing a friend, a colleague. Martin Truex Jr. wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series. 
once again. This moment presented by Sunoco, fueling victories all season long. said it's unbelievable I think that's what this year has been like but man what an emotional day Martin Truex Jr. for you and the team congratulations thank you man uh, just can't say enough about uh, all these guys on this first row Bass Pro uh, Toyota just uh, really proud of them and uh, definitely racing with heavy hearts today with losing Jim last night want to send our condolences to his family and um, all his friends and uh, he was a he was a heck of a guy and a uh, great worker and Put a lot of speed in these furnace for Road Toyota, so uh, glad we could get him here, uh, get him on here today, and uh, excited to get another one here at Kansas. This feels really awesome. It's really uh, furnace for Road's home track, and uh, just feels really good to finally get uh, finally get another one here. We we got that one in the spring after so many heartbreaks, and then today it didn't look like it was going to happen, and uh, we just persevered. When you said in the red flag we're going to go win this race, was were you channeling Wild Man at that point? I sure was. <laughs> I was channeling something, and. Uh, a lot of it was this team and the fight in us and all of us and uh, definitely thinking about Jim and his family as well. So um, it's crazy how these things work out, but uh, you just just got to give your best effort all the time and never give up and uh, just push as hard as you can all the time. And uh, that's what we did today and it worked. Congratulations. We'll see you in victory lane. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, guys. An incredibly emotional day for Martin Trex Jr. In the 78 team, the whole Furniture Row organization. We look at the eight drivers who now advance into the third round of the playoffs. Mark Shrex Jr., two wins in the round of 12. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, he was able to win to advance. Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, and Chase Elliott, all with their championship hopes still alive. Today it was all about Martin Truex Jr. and the 78 team. Leading 95 laps, but more importantly, getting another win. This one coming at Kansas.
Well, a very familiar scene in 2017. Martin Truex and the 78 Furniture Row team in Victory Lane. Here he comes. <laughs> And a look up to the sky. I know you talked about Jim, and I know everyone is thinking about Jim here today. Charlotte's win seemed celebratory, and yes, you are celebrating. This one is bittersweet because you lost a team member. You said he, you were channeling him, and I want to give you a moment to talk about that, but also just everything that you guys went through, from a penalty on the restart to a vibration in stage two to basically coming on the radio saying, we are going to win this race. I just, um, I just can't. I can't believe how this day went, and um, that's why you never give up, because you never know what can happen. Certainly thinking about Ed, uh, or Jim, I'm sorry, his family. Um, man, it's just uh, it's crazy how things, how things happen like that. And I, Cole texted me last night at 11 o'clock, so he's at the hospital. I'm like, what are you talking about, you know? So it's just uh, it's tragic. He was a huge part of this team, fabricating for both cars at the racetrack and um, making sure we get through tech, <laughs> which is quite a challenge at times. But, um, you know, just definitely... Um, Racing with heavy hearts, we were all talking about him before the race and just wanted to do good for him. And uh, I know he'd be, love to be here celebrating with us. So proud, proud of everybody and uh, just for sticking with me and never giving up. And uh, you know, today was definitely a challenge, but fast cars prevail, I guess, and, uh, and good teams prevail. So just got to thank uh, everybody. And again, the Watson family, um, thinking about you guys, your inner thoughts. And well, Bass Pro Camry was just amazing today once we got it dialed in at the end. So um, happy. I know for people who don't know the story, Jim, a fabricator, uh, passed away from a heart attack last night. You mentioned Bass Pro, Johnny Morris. Come on in here. This is a, this is a home game. Being in a deer stand or my bass boat. <laughs> it's right up there, buddy. Thank it's you. Awesome day. Absolutely. Awesome. You never gave up at all. Those restarts were like, you did it, man. See, this is the beauty. I don't even have to do the interview if I bring Johnny in. He can do it for we owe a lot to him. You know, he came on board last year and really helped us out in a tough time and, uh, you know, sponsoring this car and helping Barney and all of us. And we couldn't be more thankful. I, I owe him so much for just sticking with me throughout my career. So thank you to him and all, his, all the Bass Pro Associates and Al Cabela's Associates as well. He half of what he makes back in the shop, so it all works I know, out. It's a, great, it's a great partnership. Yeah, it's crazy. So uh, him, everybody, Furniture Row and uh, Tracker Boats and Denver Mattress, Wicks, uh, Auto Owners. Five Hour, um, TRD, everybody at Toyota, thank you guys for awesome engines again. Uh, Beechcraft and, and Garmin and all, our, all my partners that helped make this all possible. Thanks again, as always. And uh, just amazing seven races. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I just got to pinch myself. Seven wins, six of them on mile and a half tracks. There's nowhere a racer would rather be than Victory Lane. The team is here. His girlfriend Sherry is here this week. It's a special moment, a special celebration, a bittersweet one. But they're racers at heart. And Christy, you mentioned six wins on mile and a half tracks. He's now atop this list alone. He had tied Carl Edwards with his fifth one, but now at six, he has the most wins in a season on mile and a half tracks of anyone who's ever raced in NASCAR. And so now Martin Trex Jr. stands atop that list and that mountain, and he's getting ready to take another step toward the championship in 2017. Dave Burns caught up with Jimmy Johnson, who also has made the playoffs. Jimmy Johnson does a lot today, and he does enough. You are through. Let's start with what almost ended your day, lap 188, the spin. What was going on? Heck, I had two of them. Um, one uh, off of four, and the other into turn three on a restart. Just extremely loose. Um, we fought the balance throughout the day, and, and the car would swing so hard in balance from start, to, start of the run of the end that um, you know, I, I was siding for short run speed to free the car up, and we just got too far with it and, and uh, spun out twice. Thankfully, didn't hit anything too hard. And then when things really changed for me, was down the back straightaway with that wreck. Um, somehow, I, I went through there at a high rate of speed and missed everybody. I, I don't know how. I thought I made it, and then the one car was sitting there, and I thought I, I thought I had him lined up for a square impact. Unfortunately, he slid out of the way. But um, you know, just want to thank Lowe's for their continued support. We had Marshall Town on the car this weekend, and uh, excited to have them there. You know, it wasn't a pretty day, but um, you know, we, we got it done. You thanked your guys for not giving up. Talk about the hard work that went into actually getting through today. Yeah, just the roller coaster ride you're on. Spin twice. Not sure what's going to happen. Um, just trying to keep the car on the track, keep it going. You know, the 42 had problems, that big crash on the back. Um, you know, you, just, you can never give up in this sport, and that's one thing that this team has always uh, prided themselves on and something I'm very thankful for. And you head to Martinsville. Pretty pleased about that? It's not a bad track for us, so uh, 
hopefully we can repeat last year's performance over there and uh, and we have Texas coming up so we're, we're not where we want to be there's no doubt about it but we're staying alive and, and I know this team so well we can find something we're sure, sure as hell try to get it luck was on their side today Jimmy Johnson through to the round of eight and that is big he's going for his eighth championship post race followed by hashtag victory lap that coverage continuing until 8 30 p.m. Eastern it's coming up next on NBCSN. Once again, we'll look at the playoff leaderboard. This is now as the playoff points have been moved over. Martin Truex Jr. He earned another five playoff points today with the win. He's now 52 points ahead of fourth. And that ever so cut line, that, that important cut line, which is fifth, but 400 or 4,017 points for the Four of Kevin Harvick and the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, and already Martin Trex Jr. a 52-point lead over them. Yeah, but when you look at those names, Brad Keselowski, Harvick, Johnson, Hamlin, Blaney, and Elliott, and you look at the tracks coming up, Jeff, I'm having a hard time making any one of those the favorite. Jimmy Johnson has a great history, but it's been in the past. Denny Hamlin, you mentioned it during the broadcast, how good he is at Martinsville. But Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott just continue to impress as these playoffs wear on. So it's going to be a huge battle to see who perhaps is fortunate enough to join the 78 if he can continue to execute. Still not a guarantee, but does have a big advantage. Yeah, we've seen mistakes and wrecks have a huge deal. You know, it's mattered in this round. I don't see why that's going to change going into the next round. So the big surprise today was the 42 of Kyle Larson not advancing into the round of eight. Kyle Busch started off the round of 12 horribly. It looked as though he was struggling just to be able to advance, but he does, and he'll be the second seed when the round of eight begins next week. Let's hear from him. He was with Marty. What well, times today, Kyle Busch looked dominant. It's not the win you wanted or that you wanted to get, but nonetheless, you do advance, which I'm assuming is goal number one. Yeah, it's goal number one. I wouldn't have thought a 29th, a 27th, and a 10th would have made it through, you know, but um, obviously a lot of other guys had to have trouble in order for that to happen, so I hate it for those guys. We would have liked to have raced it out heads up, you know. I thought we had a great race car today, uh, really, really fast M&M's Camry that, uh, that kept us up front all day long, kept us in the game, and uh, had a shot to, to win the thing. You know, we got off on tire strategy there for a little bit, and we had to pit. That caution came out, and that just bit us, you know, so... Um, obviously, if that was Homestead, that would be your championship hopes. It's crazy in this format how how all that stuff can uh, can happen and, and what all can go down. But uh, just proud of my guys and Adam Stevens and everybody on this m and team and Joe Gibbs Racing, Toyota, TRD, everybody for giving us really good stuff and making it an opportunity for us to uh, go live and see another day. So we'll, uh, we'll fight next week. We'll live and see another day. How nice is this point reset now because you go from a week where you're on the bubble, below the bubble, now to being the second seed again. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty amazing. Um, it's just, it's just a, what the format is. The same for everybody. You just got to be uh, the best of what uh, what's going on with your situation. So, um, you know, we're going to Martinsville next week, and that's going to be really good for us, I feel like. We tested there a couple weeks ago and learned some things, felt really good about that. We, we should have won the spring race. We got tight at the end and, and finished second. So uh, looking forward to going to Martinsville, and hopefully I can just punch my ticket to Homestead and, <laughs> and uh, take two weeks off and then uh, come back and, uh, and race it, race everybody like heck for that final, that championship. After spending this week on the bubble, Kyle would love to win next week at Martinsville and make that round of four very easy. He mentioned the best in your situation well the best all season has been that man Martin Truex Jr. another win seven wins already in 2017 that's 50 percent of his career wins and they've come already this season one man who was not as lucky as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. his playoff hopes are now over and Dave caught up with him well this was certainly not how Ricky wanted it to end playoffs are over for you now Describe what you went through today to try to get there, Ricky. Yeah, we uh, had our hands full today. The car was more similar to Friday's practice versus Saturday's practice, which was a bummer. I thought we had a really good fast and all forward Saturday during practice, and we just didn't have it today during the race. And there was one run we were really good, and then uh, the next run I thought felt like something kind of broke in the car and we weren't as good. Uh, and then the last restart, I tried to go up top and uh, went in turn one. It just went kind of dead straight. and. Uh, got in the fence and then we blew a tire so uh, it was a bummer uh, you know I didn't think we had a car to go up and you know really compete to put ourselves in the championship or the next playoff round but you know I guess if we could have uh, you know at least given ourselves a shot uh, with that wreck on the back straightaway you never know what will happen but uh, it was a bummer I let my guys down um, just just trying too hard. 
How would you sum up the season? Was it overachievement? Was it about what you expected? I wouldn't say overachievement. I thought uh, we did all what we could do. I think getting to the round of eight would have been a, probably overachievement. But I thought, you know, us and this team, we thought that we would be able to to make it out of the the first round and, and into this round. And thought if everything worked out good, that you know we could be in the uh, round of eight, and, and that would be an overachievement. I thought, but uh, all in all, it's uh, not, not over. We got got plenty of racing left, and we want to get as high as we can in the points. Playoffs finished today, but represented Roush Fenway very well. A week ago, we called Talladega unpredictable, but I don't think anyone could have predicted the way the day would have gone here in Kansas. Martin Shrex Jr., the winner. Time now for post-race show. We send it over to Krista, Kyle, and DJ. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.